manual switch. So a lot of times we start talking about the arm, he'll send me an email. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're like, this is what you should be doing. <laughs> well, he'll, yeah, he'll... He'll suggest fixes for stuff that we haven't even asked him about. <laughs> oh, nice. He'll be like, I noticed that it was yeah, just yeah, he being will. a little weird, and yeah. this is what you should do to fix yep. it. That's <laughs> great. I love that. Yeah. That's good customer service. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. Kind of pokey there, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Your auto I'm gonna, payout. I'm going to speed up a little bit. All right. Yeah. I built a new control box. It has a it has a motor driven stick. Mm -hmm. So when you you hit the button on top of the stick, and then you can dial it and make it go more or less. Oh, nice. Yeah. So no more no more of this. <laughs> no more auto payout yeah. stick. Yeah. And instead of this big milk crate stainless steel box, it's just a little box. Little guy, go right. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that box is pretty chunky. Yeah. <laughs> Clunky. Yep. Yeah. Good for stubbing your toe. Yeah. So many fishes. We have someone sending lots of good vibes, vibes from landlocked Colorado. Thank you. Yeah, we need those good vibes. From where in Colorado? Just said landlocked Colorado. Oh. So. No town, just uh, no my, ocean. <laughs> my daughter lives in Colorado. Oh, really? Yeah. It's kind of late there, too. <laughs> yeah. We do have a viewer from Kansas tuning in right now, <laughs> but oh. not, I think the same person, they said hello, also from Kansas. So I oh, think okay. it's a different person. <laughs> They're wondering if it's an unmanned mission. Um, yes, 
all of our missions are unmanned. Well, they're manned from up here in the control van, but we use remotely operated vehicles. So we don't actually send people down. Um, they control the ROVs from right in here. But there is a manned submarine from Kansas yeah, <laughs> you're being operated, that. yeah. <laughs> a Pisces submarine that was reassembled oh, really? in Kansas and then now is in Tenerife in the Canary Islands. Wow. Megan, someone's wondering, um, they dream of being a marine biologist and doing stuff like us. Um, any tips on getting started? Um, well, how I got started was uh, just being really interested in the subject and learning as much as I can. Uh, when it was time to go to college, I did a lot of research into schools that have marine science programs. and. Uh, my my focus, my interest was mostly in invertebrates, mm -hmm. so uh, I knew sort of what I was interested in, and I was interested in the deep sea, but I kind of left myself open to explore a lot of different aspects of marine science, so not just biology, and I think that's really the key thing in getting started if you're interested in marine biology, um, like any kind of marine biology. You want to learn a little bit about oceanography um, and ocean currents and o geolog geology in the ocean, um, all of that stuff, uh, because every aspect of the ocean environment affects the biology, and the biology in terms affects some of those oceanographic uh, parameters. Oh, there's a little hatchet fish. Yeah, what's that? See, it looks like a hatchet. You like, yeah. if you grabbed it by the tail, you could like. Chop. Chop, chop, <laughs> chop, small <laughs> things. <laughs> They're very skinny and flat. So yeah. uh, that's the fun thing about those fish is they have those shiny silver sides that reflect the color of the water. So it makes them very difficult to see uh, unless you shine bright lights on them. Hmm. But yeah, so getting started was, was kind of hard just to find a place where I could learn the things I wanted to learn. Um, and you have to be very self-motivated because you know you have a lot of people coming into marine biology really interested in you know, dolphin training or whales. And, and that's kind of, it, it's more difficult to get into that. And that's more animal um, psychology mm -hmm. if that's the thing that you're interested in. Uh, if you're interested in marine biology and doing what we do, there's a lot of physics and chemistry that you also have to know. And so you need to be open to learning about some of those other sciences in addition to just your biology courses. And I know a couple people have mentioned, they're like, Megan, how do you know so many things about so many things? Um, you know, beyond just, you know, the names of the animals. And that's because, you know, I've been around a lot of these other really smart people who have taught me really wonderful things about the ocean environment, and it just fascinates me. And so I'll try to soak up as much information as I can. And I really enjoy sharing that information with you guys on the, the live stream. So I am glad people are enjoying it, and I hope I can inspire some people to follow their passion in marine science. Uh, just know that it is going to be hard. It's it's not an easy road to go down mm -hmm. uh, to get here, but it's totally worth it. Uh, and every day is an adventure. Thanks. Shellfish. 
We are seeing lots of fun things in the water column tonight. I'm not an expert in uh, water column fishes, but I know a couple of them, and I know a couple jellies. I'm, I'm working on it. So we'll see mctophids, so lantern fishes. Um, we'll see cyclothony, which are bristle mouth fishes. Um, we'll see things like siphonophores, uh, jellies. We, uh, there was that sort of dinner plate jelly that floated by that's called slismus. Um, what else have we been seeing? We saw a bunch of squids when we first went in the water. They get attracted by the lights from the ship and so they get really excited. Then they ink us. Yeah, and then they <laughs> ink us, because it's like, oh my goodness, what's this thing? <laughs> but maybe we'll see a really big squid. Yeah. Ooh, that's what I want to see. You know, after the, the octopus earlier today, We've got to see some other yeah, really chance. cool cephalopods. Yeah. Uh, that octopus. So cute. It was so cute. I was uh, rewatching it um, on Facebook earlier, and uh, I was looking at the, the auto-generated captions, mm -hmm. and I just love how it spells some of the funny things that I say. Uh. <laughs> it gets, I mean, it tries, but it just, it's just really fun to see the, the creativity and some of the spellings for our okay. scientific names. What is that? It looks like a, an octopus or a squid. It's uh, a squid. squid. It's yeah. a squid. I want to see a sea angel. Mm -hmm. You see those little little flappy flaps, as I like to call them. I'm sure they have a real name. A flappy flap. The flappy flaps. <laughs> <laughs> the fins. I think that was the funniest thing I saw when it, the auto-generated captions came on <laughs> with the flappy flaps. I'm like, yeah, okay, I said that. Yeah, I guess another good tip about people interested in doing what we do is uh, one thing that I wish I had done more of before getting into my career is learning how to do computer coding. Mm -hmm. um, it really comes in handy to know some computer languages, and I've been learning some very slowly, but I wish I was more fluent in coding. It is definitely one of those skills that, especially nowadays, comes in really handy. Like using R and things like that? Um, yeah, absolutely. R is a great tool, especially for marine scientists. Uh, almost everybody uses R that I know mm -hmm. um, to process their data, to create graphs. Like, you can make some really nice graphs mm -hmm. in R. Uh, it takes a little bit more R. time yeah. than trying to get Excel to make something nice real quick. Oh, yeah. but. It's kind of worth it to get R to do it because mm -hmm. Excel always messes your graphs, graphs up. Like you open the file again and then all of your fonts are different. You have to go back and change them all again. So like, does it really save you time? Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with the whole coding thing. I learned a little bit of coding, coding in undergrad, but it was more of like drop down menu kind of analysis and stuff like that. And it wasn't until I got into grad school that we started to code more for like analyses and everything like for our thesis and I felt just really behind because I didn't get much coding experience in my undergrad so I agree with Megan mm. definitely coding learning to code because it's it's very it's very useful 
Mm -hmm, absolutely. And once you know one language, it's easier to learn others, just like mm -hmm. when you're learning speaking languages. So, you know, if you learn R, which is one of the, one, an easier one to learn that can be really useful, you can switch over to learning Python, which can be useful for other types of things. Um, the code that I know the best is actually for writing websites. So I know how to write in HTML. Awesome. And I've designed websites for the University of Hawaii. That's awesome. Is there any software that like analyze the video and count the critters? <laughs> yeah, so the software that I use for video annotation, it was developed at MBARI, the Monterey <laughs> Bay Research Institute. Um, and it's called BARS, so Video Annotation um, Reference System. But it automatically like identifies animals? No, no, oh. you, the person has to do oh, it. No. The person has to do all the annotation. This is 2022, you gotta get with the program. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> people, we, we are working, scientists are working very hard to um, automate some of the annotating. Um, the first step is first the detection of the organism. Yeah. So for the computer to learn that is an organism, but gotta, that is not yeah. an organism. Yeah, you got to enter all that data. Yeah. Gotta, or get somebody to so help collect the data. Exactly. <laughs> so annotators like myself are working on collecting these data as we go through the video. We put bounding boxes around organisms and give that organism an identification. And that helps and train the computer to learn what to look for for identifying organisms. It can do pretty well with some stuff, um, like some fishes, um, some corals, but it's not really good at transparent or translucent animals. Yeah. Uh, it gets confused. So there's still a lot of work to be done in terms of in training AI to recognize organisms and auto identify things. Yeah. But there has been some successes for small scale projects, um, like looking at bottom fish populations or um, corals. Yeah. Bob, there's a message saying to tell you I had the bow view on about to go to sleep, but then I heard my name. I am still watching. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. He's still <laughs> watching. <laughs> well, have a good night. <laughs> All right. Sweet dreams. <laughs> we got lots of blue water now, so. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a few hours of blue water. Well, actually, 86 minutes. Oh, oh great. <laughs> I don't know what sounds better, the minutes or hours. <laughs> I feel like the, the minute sounds like less, but then it feels like more. Yeah. Because yep. otherwise it's like an hour and a half. We always get blue water. Hamel. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun, it's fun. <laughs> Come on, so, so find a force, show us. Show us your face. <laughs> Do they have a face? I don't know. I don't no, so. they definitely don't have faces. <laughs> but you could give them faces, I guess. Yeah, you'd have to in a cartoon. You could, like, arrange them so they look like faces. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bob, they will be watching at work tomorrow. They're all right. <laughs> don't mess we'll up. We'll be here. <laughs> don't mess up. <laughs> Yeah, we'll take one for the team tonight. Again. <laughs> Again. This is my only watch, and I get blue water. Mm. Well, you could split. Jamie does the morning. You could share with Jamie. Yeah. Kelly, do we have any exciting interactions tomorrow? We have lots of interactions tomorrow. Um. I get to do a really fun one. We had one the, uh, last week, and now there's one tomorrow. Um, 
it's a little bit different because there's not someone on the ship who can help me, so we have them on shore helping, but I get to do an Alilo Hawaii interaction tomorrow, um, which are really fascinating. So um, did one yes last week and I will do one tomorrow and have someone on shore help translate to the students who speak Hawaiian. Um, but I really enjoy those actually. Yeah, that sounds really fun. Yeah, and next cruise we will have somebody on the ship who um, speaks in Alila, Hawaii, so we'll have a lot of interactions on the next cruise, um, as well as American Sign Language students. So I think the next cruise interactions will just be really fascinating. We'll have, you know, our typical ones that we always schedule, but also a few different languages that we don't normally get to use on board. That's really great. It's wonderful to be able to reach people who wouldn't normally get to speak in their yeah, um, most native language. Um, and hopefully, if all goes as planned, tomorrow night we're connecting to a school in Turkey. Oh, oh boy. Cool. All right, well, now that Emil's here, we can do introductions. We All were right, thanks waiting for, for you. Thanks. Um, okay, so name, what you're doing, where you're from, favorite, deep sea organism. Okay. Hmm. I'm Kelly Moran. I am from Connecticut, so up on the east coast of the mainland. And um, I am out here as communications lead, but normally I am the... Uh, education program coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust and my favorite deep sea organism is uh, an isopod. Uh -huh. I think they're weird but kind of cute at the same <laughs> time. The, the like giant ones? Or? <laughs> That's yeah, what I said on the last <laughs> they <laughs> creep me out way less than the worms do. Uh -huh. I don't know why, like, <laughs> but I like them. Hi, I'm Emil Petruncio, watch lead uh, from Arnold, Maryland, about 10 miles up the road from Annapolis. I coach the Navy fencing team there. I'll get back from this cruise just in time to join them for the national championships up in Providence. Hmm. Um, and I teach, I'm an adjunct professor at Anne Arundel Community College. Uh, I think my new favorite is the Syratoothed <laughs> Syrate octopus mm -hmm. after our, our last watch. Um, with uh, the flamboyant squid worm running a close second. Mm. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. For bizarreness. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Leilani Sablon. Mm. I'm from Guam and I'm also the student there. Um, my favorite deep sea organism has to be a Dumbo octopus. Oh. Yeah, for sure. That was just way too cute. I know. I still think about it. That's <laughs> like everyone's favorite, <laughs> which is understandable. Oh yeah. Hi everyone, this is Megan Putz, your navigator I'm from the University of Hawaii. And uh, my favorite deep sea organism is all of them. Uh, <laughs> but if I have to choose right at this moment, I would choose the gold co coral Kulamanamana hamea. Mm. Awesome. Have we it, seen one yet? No, we're too deep for them. Oh, um, they, they usually grow at 300, 500 meters. Oh. And they are parasitic on bamboo corals, so they take over a bamboo coral skeleton and then create their own skeleton on top of it. And oh. they can live well over 2,000 years and grow extremely slowly. And they're a bright yellow color. Hmm. Very cool. And I'm Robert Waters. I'm in the Herc seat. I'm from LA. And my favorite deep sea critter is uh, Pompeii worms, but if I ever see a goblin shark, that might take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My name is Jake Bonney. I'm from Rhode Island. And my favorite deep sea critter is, uh, well, I don't know, there's a lot of them. But the last expedition, last season, uh, we saw tons of chonoclops fish, like the angler fish. Mm. Wow. I think it's an angler fish. Right? Yeah. They're, they're cool looking. Yeah, they are. 
Hi, I'm Dave Robertson. I'm a video engineer and I'm uh, from uh, Anchorage, Alaska. Let's see. Uh, everybody already said Dumbo octopus too much. I, I love <laughs> octopus. All octopus. Dumbo octopuses are great. That kind of stuff. But I'm going to change it up. I'm going to go tube worms. Ooh, tube worms. Nice. Yeah. Very interesting tube worms. One of the first things that I saw uh, in the in the deep ocean was uh, tube worms uh, at the Endeavor Field uh, off Vancouver Island. Mm. And, uh, hanging on the side of a black smoker. Very cool. The, the yeah. riftia or the... The ones that have the kind of reddish gills that yeah. stick out, big ones. Yeah. 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 They're very bloody. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Make a mess. Yeah. So just for clarity, the Dumbo octopus <laughs> <laughs> applies to the Grimpatuthus, the little short stubby guys. And what we saw at the end of last watch was a rarely seen um, cirrotoothed octopus. Also has the big fins that look even actually bigger, bigger proportionally bigger. And they they look did, more yeah. like Dumbo's ears than than the Dumbo octopus. But um, yeah, rarely seen. Probably uh, I have to look at the uh, taxonomy. It might be a different family. I have to check. It was so cute. Don't worry, everyone. more elongated. Yeah. Than, than it will it. definitely be a highlight. Yeah. Our shoreside team is on it. A good imagery of it, yeah. I really like those, uh, the flapjack octopuses, because they get all flat. <laughs> flapjack. Yeah, they're, they're another Dumbo octopus. We've seen a couple, but not on this small, cruise, but. Yeah. You usually see them off the California yeah. coast. Yeah. That's where that yellow one we saw was. One. Yeah. Oh, okay. And you know, when they like land on the like, ground and they just kind of puddle out, yeah, it's adorable. What about the vampire squid? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those ones are cute too. <laughs> I like those. We have a few folks wondering how deep is today's dive. Uh, we are expected to go to um, about 3,100 meters. So, very deep. <laughs> but it's going to take a little while. 74 minutes. 74 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so send us your questions while we wait for something really cool to swim in front of Hercules. <laughs> Megan, someone's wondering if there's any updates on the strange sponge you collected last night. Um, not yet. So we'll have to do a spicule prep, and that means that we got to dissolve away the tissue with a with bleach, and then we can look at the spicules under a microscope. We don't really have the microscopes that we need on board, so we'll have to wait till we get to shore to be able to look at that to find out what kind of sponge it is. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely need to consult some sponge experts like Chris Kelly to find out what kind of sponge it was looking at. Uh, I think though upon closer inspection that it's likely in the family Euplectality. Um, but it's not a genus that I am familiar with because it was rooting in the sediment and had those sort of large holes. So it's it could be something new, or it's not something that I know, and I'd have to look through the literature to find more about it. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of hard to download all the things that I need at the moment. So once I'm back in my office, I can look through the literature that we have on our server. I'm all still looking at octopus. <laughs> You're not on SPL. Yes, your tooth a day is a different family than uh, the rest. Than opis, toothis. <laughs> Apista, tooth a day family. But they're in the same order: octopa, hmm. octopoda. Oh, I love them all. 
big ears. <laughs> uh, the one to, yeah. It just had like the biggest ear, like biggest flaps. I thought it was a sea cucumber at first. Cause like before you saw it's the eight tentacles, it was just like, I thought it was a swimming cucumber. It was a nice approach. You know, yeah, tiny it was little perfect. red dot zooming in. It's perfect. It's a tough shot trying to keep, first of all, he's moving, we're moving. Yeah. Uh, and then he's uh, small and transparent. Yeah. And <laughs> trying to get, keep him in frame with, uh, with Bob flying, Bob or uh, Jake, I'm not sure who was flying on that. But, uh, and then perfect. trying to maintain focus on the coral gang. It's got buffered around in the prop wash and all. But I had to go back and look at it too. Yep. <laughs> So sorry I missed the bubble release. Did it look pretty cool coming out of the <laughs> boxes? Oh, Bob, we are not on SPL. Sorry. That's okay. I was saying, yeah, it, we dumped quite a bit of air out of the box. So, uh, I mean, it's really cool to have a bunch of bubbles in the water like that. Not cool that we couldn't drive down though. <laughs> <laughs> a head scratcher. Yeah. What was yeah. the issue? The boxes got closed too much and there was air in the boxes. Oh. So I couldn't drive down because we were floating. Point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were a big bubble. Yeah. That was really confusing for a minute there. <laughs> hmm. Has that ever happened before? I don't think I've experienced that before, <laughs> no. <laughs> First time for everything. All on this cruise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it. Yeah. So what was interesting, we were talking about, you know, what kind of buoyancy systems are on the ROVs yesterday. Or was that earlier? When was that? <laughs> Who knows anyway, at this point? I think that was uh, your yeah. dream. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we do have a buoyancy system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unintentional. Uh, yeah. yeah. But it works very similar to the one on the Alvin submarine. It's just in trapped air, and you just open a valve and let the air out the top, and then huh. you lose the buoyancy. Hmm. No, we can do it now. We've been stretched out. Well, I hope we can get some good rocks at, on this seamount for dating. It, uh, it's possible that seamount C, where we were, is so old Maybe that I'll, uh, all the rocks all were... Walk it back around? Not right. Uh, back over yeah, here. They were we'll all, uh, do it again. Okay. Yeah, they were all altered. Chemically altered. How old do you think that last seamount was? For the 6-8 <sighs> cable? Uh, I, yeah. Some of them could be... I, I'm not sure about the Lion Islands. I mean, they're, I thought 70 to 80 million years old was typical. Um, it's possible there are some older ones out there. Geology timelines are so crazy when you think about them. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we think be about slowing these down though, so. huge features in the Pacific, like Hess Rise, which is up near Liliokalani Ridge and, uh, for the next expedition. That one is, uh, that ridge was possibly created by a hot spot that was associated with Hess Rise, this mm -hmm. big 100 million year old feature. Below that, below the Hawaiian Ridge of the Mid-Pacific Mountains, that's about 100 million years old. So there was a lot going on in the seafloor before the Hawaiian Ridge was even anything. It's a newcomer yeah, into the great. Pacific. <laughs> a newcomer. Compared to these seamounts we've been exploring, yeah. Yeah. So who is Hess? 
Uh, maybe that's uh, named after Admiral Harry Hess, who found the Geos in World War II. Huh. Princeton well, because University. there's the Hess Deep, too. So. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. Because, yeah, yeah. He, he was he contributed to the whole seafloor spreading Yeah, the Hess Deep's a very revolution. interesting place to dive. It's a sheer wall that's taller than the Grand Canyon. Wow. Yeah, it goes down to more than 5,000 meters, I think. Like, yeah, that's uh, crazy. Where is it? Uh, it's down, I think, off of Costa Rica? Somewhere. I don't know. I don't have Google. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if uh, Google Earth is smart enough to recognize that. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like it's off uh, Central America. Ah. So, the, like the... Is in the Cayman Trough? Or no, west? Oh, there is a little subduction zone out there. Yeah. Yeah, the Nazca Plate and the Pacific Plate, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. They all come together right there. Yeah, right there yeah. in that center part. Of west That's of a great the place coast. for people who are looking for flat, angular rocks. There's oh yeah, lots of them there. Lots of yeah. angular rocks. Yeah, dikes. That sounds like it was an Alpen dive. Yep. Yeah, it would be kind of hairy to do Hess deep in a ROV. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Because you come on these huge rocks that jut way out from oh, the wall. Oh, overhangs. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we don't really like those, do we? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not good for wires. You don't really like them in the submarine either, but. <laughs> <laughs> At Johnson Atoll, <laughs> Trevor kind of slightly went under an overhang. Yeah. It's uh, covered with crinoids and. Go ahead, Bridge. Uh, corals. Thank you. Hey, Emil. Um, are you looking at high pack? Yes. So do we want to move back to our waypoint or do we want to just land here? It looks like it should be relatively flat where we are and we'll be closer to this feature going it's up. <coughs> it's only a 10 meter depth difference or? Yeah, it's yeah, only that, about 10 meters. That'll be fine. Okay, cool. That must have been due to the streaming the vehicles out at launch, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, yeah, from streaming the vehicles forward, we, we moved forward a little bit. But I'm not too concerned with this landing spot. It should be nice and, and sandy and yeah, happy. Yeah, I mean, there is a wall, a little steep area just ahead of us, but... Yeah. Um, we should settle out beforehand, you know, yeah. back behind that space enough so it won't be too crazy. Yeah, if necessary, we can back off when we see bottom. That's going to be an interesting ascent. Yeah, there's a, a lot of contours across to get mm -hmm. up here to waypoint three. And it looks like we've got a little bit of area of missing data. So we'll do the best we can with that. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll just stay east of there. Someone's wondering if uh, we ever give ship tours um, on occasion, but we have not uh, since COVID, um, and we still are not uh, because of that. Um, trying to keep everyone that we bring out on EV Nautilus safe and um, going through our COVID protocols. So uh, we are not doing public tours at this time, but we do have a really good Nautilus tour video 
on our YouTube page and also um, you can search for it here on Nautilus Live. So I highly recommend checking out that video. Um, it does give you a really good tour of the ship and shows you where we're going around um, when you're walking through the vessel. So um, I highly recommend checking out that tour. And hopefully one day we can give tours again in person. Does it include the forward cabins up there? Uh, no. Uh -huh. That's the VIP tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not quite ready yet. It's still missing some things in the bookcases. There's a question for uh, Jake and Bob. Someone's wondering, as ROV pilots, do you use depth and altitude off bottom for the ROV in meters, feet, or both? Uh, we all our measurements are in meters. Yeah, we're a metric system. Is that for a specific pur purpose? That's the scientific, like all science. Yep. They use metric. That's the standard. I wish we would switch over and really. I'm I'm okay with all every metric. Measurement except temperature, that messes me up. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can understand that. Yeah. Except minus, what is it, minus 40? Minus 40 Fahrenheit's also minus 40 Celsius. <laughs> really? Yeah. So starting out at the bottom of a steep area, you know, when we uh, get settled on the seafloor, we should take a little time to look for a, a good ro angular rock. Mm -hmm. And Coralie won't be on this watch, so we, uh, we'll have to kind of be, be her eyes for gotcha. some of the darker non-sediment rocks. Yeah, yeah got a good feel for the encrusted ones. It's the, hard, <laughs> the hard one is these angular that are not altered. Have we gotten any already? Or no, are we slacking a bit? I'm not sure we got any f good for dating at Seamount C. Hmm. Well, I'd be interested to hear what uh, the experts have to say about the those layers, yeah. the strata. I yeah, know that, that one was so, it was just weird. The folks on the science chat were kind of stumped, I think. Hmm. There's a question coming through on what sorts of things do you like to do in your downtime while on the ship? Hmm. Sunrise, sunset. Yeah, you're a big big fan of those, yeah. but uh, boy, we finally got a nice sunset this evening. Yeah, We've been under the clouds really for happy. days. Yeah. Nice colors. Yep. I like to go to the gym on occasion, just to change the scenery, <laughs> work out a little bit. I like to read too every night. I try and get a couple pages in. Reading I, and napping. In a, in a, like out of a book? <laughs> You're a big fan. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like paper. You know, this paper <laughs> Kelly <laughs> knows this. Wow. <laughs> it's like a poorly interactive web page. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I actually bring a book. I, like, physically need to hold a book in wow. my hands. I do not use, like, a Kindle or something. I, like, actually have to hold it. Uh, I brought four books. Wow. With about six backups on my phone, but I hate reading on my phone. Really? But, yeah. I read have you, how many have you gotten through? Two. Already? Yeah. You're a fast reader. Uh, yeah, I read a lot. But I don't watch movies or do anything else. Really. <laughs> yeah. 
like you, I, I you know, get in a few pages every night. Yeah, it's nice. It calms me down. Even though my book right now is on a murder mystery, but oh. <laughs> still very <laughs> relaxing. <laughs> Steve says his dive plans are great material to fall asleep oh to. Oh, boy. Yeah. Be very relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> Page two. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like murder mystery books are the same as people, and I'm one of them, but like people who fall asleep to like murder mystery TV shows. <laughs> That's what oh I do. Wait. Fall asleep to those? Yeah, forensic files. Oh my god. <laughs> I watch those huh. things every night and I fall wow. I just fall asleep to it. It's the person's voice hosting the show. It's very calming. Not so much like the actual situation that's happening in the show, but just his voice narrating it yeah. is calming to me. It's very soothing. I just go to bed. Mm -hmm. It's kinda weird, but Yeah, that <laughs> not sure what that was. <laughs> I've been crocheting. Oh, yeah, you have. <laughs> How's your um, shawl looking? Oh, it's looking pretty good. It's getting there. Are you going to finish before this cruise is over? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll finish it. <laughs> Depends on how a uh, mapping watch goes on the way back. Mm. You've also been making a lot of the whipped coffee. Yeah, that's been fun. It's pretty difficult to make it when you don't have good measuring tools. So I've just yeah. been like eyeballing it. So the last one, uh, I think I added too much coffee and not enough water. It didn't whip up quite quite the same. I think the first one that I made was the best so far. But I'll, I'll maybe try to make another one tomorrow. Mm. This might just be because we're on week three, but I also like to just for 10 minutes go on the monkey deck every day when no one else mm. is up there and just close my eyes and sit on the bench. Quiet, <laughs> quiet time is good. Just quiet mm -hmm. for like 10 minutes. Zero reps? Yeah, do it. Someone's asking, does it ever just hit you how far out in the ocean you are? Oh, yes. I had that thought <laughs> yesterday. Did you? <laughs> yep. I woke up and I was like, whoa. <laughs> Where <laughs> am I? I'm in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> how did I get here? I've thought about it many times. It's like, wow, land is very far away. <laughs> very far. <laughs> like at points we were near land, but it wasn't like a super populated land, you know, like Palmyra had a few scientists on board, but yeah, it wasn't, or that. on land, but it wasn't. It was so nice to see land though. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it was small yeah. enough to see through your porthole. At a distance. Was, yeah. Yeah. And at a distance. But this expedition is uh, rapidly finishing up, really. Is that the mm -hmm. tilt again? Oh. Indeed. Yes, it is. Our weather window is closing on us. We expect to be back in port. You're going to be pretty busy on this transit back. Around Tuesday. We will. You will. Yeah, yeah. our V team will. Yeah. yeah. We, got all, we got a whole list of stuff we got to do. Yeah. Is it going to be more challenging if we're in <laughs> kind of choppy seas. weather? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it That's will. Sure. <laughs> yeah, there's an art to soldering like 28 gauge wires out on the deck of oh the rain. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's the tilts. <laughs> Are you guys going to also be busy in port or just trying to yep. get it all done when well, you're out some here? Of this, I don't really want to open up the, the electronics mm. bottles Yeah. while we're bouncing around and the squalls <laughs> rolling through. and Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I get that. So we've been lucky and been avoided going in there, but both Argus and Hercules need, need to have their main electronic bottles opened up and... Mm. Guts, guts yep. exposed. And that has to wait till Tuesday. Well, I just I don't like opening the bottle. Let's see. Yeah, like I get I that. I can help it. Makes yeah. sense. 
Leilani, someone said you can get little island-shaped stickers and put them on the portholes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so it looks like we're seeing land. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> so Steve's reminding us to uh, keep an eye out for instances of predation, sea stars on corals. Run that thing, Jake. Collect both the sea star and the coral prey. Okay. And then he went to bed. Night, Steve. Just probably won't see that down deep, but maybe uh, up around 25, 2400 meters or so. Yeah, wherever we see nice high density communities of bamboo coral, yeah. will be a good opportunity to make those collections. That'll take up a lot of room, but yeah, yeah it, forward bio box or something. Yeah. It would be really, it was like yesterday when we saw the, or this morning, <coughs> it was difficult just because everything was on those walls. Like, yeah. how do you get in there and make that collection without? you know, harming yeah. other corals in the area. Exactly. And we had floaty things in our bio boxes. So opening it on the fly wouldn't have been a good idea because then we would have lost all of our sponges that we worked so hard to collect. It's true. So yes to our viewer asking, we are currently uh, descending down to the seafloor. Bob, how much more minutes? Oh, well, let's see here. Fifteen forty-eight. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It looks like the number we hasn't changed. <laughs> we didn't change our speed that did much. What did I say before? Was Seventy it something? Seventy. Yeah. Six oh, 50, minutes. Fifty-two minutes. Now, or so. now it's like what? A hundred minutes. And well, it's still 72. It's still 72. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's not right. It's only been longer than 72 yeah. minutes if you told me it was 70 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so somewhere between like 50 and 60, maybe. 60 we can, something. We can figure it out. It takes it's not a big take. It's not a big less deal. Less than an hour. We'll yeah, we'll less than there. an hour. We're almost more. halfway there. Yeah, great. Yeah, halfway there. That's very optimistic. Why? I like it. Why, what? Oh, uh, you're much lower than me. I gotta speed up. Oh, that's the problem. So someone's wondering, is there a particular location on the ocean where each of us would like to dive with an ROV? And that's from Jay from Canada. That's a tough question. Where, if you could pick anywhere to go, uh, is there like a particular location that you'd want to dive in with an ROV to mm -hmm. go see? Some active submarine volcano would be cool. Mm. Yeah, that's that's pretty. That'd awesome. be cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I wasn't on the Galapagos trips, but I'd like to go see. Like that all the tube worms and the yeah, like lavas and near Galapagos. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it'd be really cool. There was some nice hiking on the local, you know, uh, I guess it was a witch island. I don't recall. Easy little trail from downtown where our boat, small boat comes in to hike. A little, this little trail <coughs> through the trees that you see all the finches. Oh, and pretty. then you end up at the beach where all the... Uh, Marine iguanas are. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I'd want to do that. Yeah, there's this tiny, um, little sort of like micro island off the coast of Kauai called Kalua Rock. I want to do a dive there. Mm. I planned to dive there and I didn't get to do it. So mm. I'm kind of still itching to go there because, mm. you know, I, I made the dive plan. I feel <laughs> Steve's pain of all the dives that uh, didn't he's get to planned do. during this expedition and ha didn't get to do. So, yeah, that's one oh, of those right things now. that I, I want to do. There you go. That's right. We're like 57 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <That's laughs> Reason more reasonable. Right. More reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> it's about an hour. All right. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Someone's asking, what wildlife do we get on the boat? 
<laughs> Besides the boobies? <laughs> Lots of birds. <laughs> boobies. Yeah. Birds everywhere. Very so many flying birds. fish. Yeah, the flying fish. Sometimes flying fish. Yeah. Fly fish. tip sharks. They, they're not generally on the boat. Well, they're not on the boat. Yeah, they're not on the boat. Sorry. Yeah, let's They're around the boat. <laughs> they are around the boat, yeah. <laughs> Enough to be considered wildlife. That's true. They are swimming around the ship. Mostly birds, sometimes fish. Once there was a bat. Oh, a bat. What? When was this? Oh, we've had hawks that would live up on the. They would hunt the small birds. Oh and yeah. They'd live up up in the yeah up in the top of the mast. They just hang out there and just they would hunt the small birds. <laughs> Oh, here's a good question, Emil. Even though Steve does the planning, but you help out too. How much planning goes into each dive? Uh, quite a bit. I mean, it all starts with picking the sites in the first place. That's yeah. uh, getting familiar with all the seamounts in the area, the geological questions that might be answered by sampling. Um, and then, yeah, you focus on the seamount you have a general idea, but you've got to have good maps to really plan the waypoints and see what where the interesting steep features are. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, if we have some good mapping available, great. But a lot of the times, most of the time, I think, we are to map first, analyze it, make some calls on which ridge to ascend. Yep. And just go with it. It's so it's a. Uh, I, I found it challenging to try to. S you know, I wanted to ex explore every ridge <laughs> on Baker Island and Howland and the nearby seamounts, but you got to go with just one that looks most promising. Yeah. Someone's wondering what's it like getting back on land after being at sea for so long. I feel like everyone's a little bit different. I am fine on land. I want to like immediately go get some new food and walk around, go for a nice walk. Um, but I, everything else is fine. Sometimes when I lie down to go to sleep, I still think I'm rocking even though I'm not. But that <laughs> goes away after like three days. I anticipate being a little wobbly. <laughs> Yeah. Like the world kind of swaying a little bit. I'm usually okay on land. It's just the lying down part. I think I'm still moving even though I'm lying there. Yeah, I get that pretty good. Like I lie down that first night on land and it feels like I'm drunk. Yeah, you like, yeah. like I feel like spins. you're still wobbling. Oh man. I had it pretty bad last time. Yeah, after we're along that Voyager Seamounts NA 134. Yeah. Well, you had that really intense transit back. Oh my god, it, it was, was awful. Yeah, it was a rough transit back. <laughs> it was not yeah. good. We were in 11 foot seas, but we were happy because we, we weren't in the 18 foot seas. Oh my god. To the west. What is it going to be like on our way back? Uh, I think Don't 10, ask, 10 foot combined seas, mm -hmm. so swell plus wind waves 10 feet. Um, but it looks like they might be on our starboard bow, which would be a decent ride relatively decent ride. The last time we were really We had it rolling. on a beam. Yeah. yeah, it was not the right way to relax. But I am looking forward to going for a nice long walk and just stretching my legs. So that was Santa Cruz Island in the Galapagos. We, we pulled into Puerto Ayora, and then it's a short hike over to Galap um, Galapagos Beach at Tortuga Bay. Hmm. And that's where all the, sea, the uh, marine iguanas were. You should talk to Jamie about it. She was thinking of going to the Galapagos. Uh, yeah, she's been asking people for recommendations of things to do. Yeah. Uh, there was a little Airbnb right 
You should tell near her. Near that trail, yeah. Give her a heads up on that. Yeah, you should. Saw the turtles, too. That oh, was great. Jealous. So jealous. I always like find it very interesting with um, like family or friends when you tell them about these trips and how you know you have to go away for to sea for three weeks or however long you go for and everyone's like oh that's so exciting I mean and it is but it's not a vacation you know like we're uh, really uh. working hard <laughs> like not a vacation. so <laughs> you you were gone for three weeks in some trap like you know on this trip it's some tropical areas it's it's warm we might go get to go to hawaii we get to see some land in the middle of the pacific ocean that no one really gets to see um but it's not a vacation so it's not it's not as relaxing as or as you know yeah exploration easy going is, as, is work yeah. yeah 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 we're not swimming and drinking mai tais no <laughs> You know, and every time I'm always like, oh, I should stay, you know, wherever we are a couple of days later. And people are like, you've been gone for three weeks. You want to stay longer? I'm like, yeah, I need a break. <laughs> <laughs> I need some downtime. I mean, this is super rewarding and I wouldn't, it's wonderful to come out here. Just a lot of work. But the payoff is seeing things that no humans have yeah, seen before. It's worth it. Someone's wondering if there's something anyone is most looking forward to on this dive. The Getting bottom. Some <laughs> the blobs? Yeah. The bottom. Oh, the bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you said the blobs. I want to see another octopus. Yeah. I hope we get some good collections for Steve of his yeah. corals and uh, predators. Yeah, he needs some predation. Yeah, predation events. Just in general, predation events are really fun. Like, we saw a couple all on the yesterday side. We just didn't have enough like areas to put them in. Mm -hmm. You know, like all of our boxes were so full, we couldn't really put a coral-eating <laughs> sea star no. into them. The yeah. communities were too dense to disturb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we don't want to break corals that are hundreds of years old. No, definitely not. I saw some really nice Eritogorgia last dive. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd like to see something I haven't seen before. So. Yeah. But that's been happening every dive. <laughs> so it's a pretty good bet. I don't think, no, I'd, I'd never seen a batfish before, before this cruise. Yeah, those guys are real cute, but they're easy to miss because they're so small. You think they're in. rocks, and then look. you zoom in, and they're fish. Yeah, it looked like a rock. But yeah, I'd really like to see a good, useful angular <laughs> basalt yeah. rock. Help untangle the ages of these seamounts. Is this one sitting off a bit from the Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if we can see that like weird geology that we saw last mm. time. Yeah, on this seamount. That'd be something. Like those layers. Did we ever get a better idea of what those layers were from that rock? I don't think so. Not I think yet. it stumped the scientists on shore. Really. Now someone's wondering, and it might be the same person, but they're wondering, are there any species that we hope not to see? Something invasive or something that just shouldn't be there or that we're scared of? Um, garbage. Yeah, Plasticus Marine Maximus. Yeah, yeah, garbage. <laughs> lines. We definitely don't want to see any lines. Fish yeah. lines. Oh, yeah. That's, like, terrifying. <sighs> yeah. We saw lots of fishing line off the coast of California. Yeah, I'm some sure. Some of our shallow dives. 
There's no animals I don't want to see. Yep. No, I'll see every animal. Yep. Jake, here's a good one for you. Um, what is ROV training like, and is it easy to find work? Um, well, I've only done ROV training with this group out here, uh, and I started as an intern, and I've uh, just slowly gained more exper experience. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, kind of came with some some patience, but also some persistence. I kind of, uh, after I came out as an intern, I kind of um, worked my way into a conference and knew that I knew OET was going to be at and <laughs> uh, <laughs> bugged some people and kind of got invited back out. <laughs> so smart. Smart. <laughs> yep. Yep. It worked out. I didn't realize until today. I probably, I mean, I knew it. I just didn't like fully grasp it, I guess, in my head until I said it out loud that um, the three like Argus pilots on this trip were all once interns. Yep. Uh, on our last cruise, or our last last season, uh, Rennie, Jess, and I were in the front row, and mm -hmm. we were all interns. Yep. And then I think Steve was in our back row, and Steve was Steve also was an intern. An intern. Yeah. I know. I like love the fact that the three of you, like you, Antonella, um, and Kylie, were all interns, and now you're all training on Hercules. And then Steve was an intern <laughs> back yeah. a, well, a long time ago, and I now he's lead side. Yeah, yeah, and it's that's pretty cool. I'm happy you're all coming back. Now you're kind of stuck with us. <laughs> yep. But it's cool to watch that transition of interns learning our systems to, you know, eventually, hopefully having you guys be doing it without needing someone else to show you what to do. Yep. It is pretty unique. Someone is watching from Indonesia and said that they watched been the holding. whole dive yesterday, fell wow. asleep on blue water, and just woke up and we're still in blue water. So thank you. <laughs> <we have. laughs> Should be dropping out. Wow, yeah. Watched the whole dive. It's two separate dives, I promise. <laughs> it's not the same blue water. Huh. But thank you for watching the whole dive. That's impressive. They saw some good stuff. Yeah. Yep.
So, Dave, these uh, limiting the number of recorded segments on the Cinedex, uh, how, how quickly can you make that change to a, you know, you, you mentioned yeah. a pause in the operations. Right, 30 seconds. Ah, that's easy. The, the <laughs> when uh, when they uh, failed, the recordings failed uh, after 80 segments, then it crashes the application, and we have to use it's a Windows app, so we have to use Task Manager to kill the application, then relaunch it, and then start recording. And it takes you know a couple of minutes sometimes for to do both of them and you know, all of that. But in this case, we're anticipating that uh, we'll just stop it at. Uh, the 80 segment uh, mark and then we'll be ready poised finger poised on the mouse and uh, click record and go on ahead so it's a workaround but uh, should minimize the uh, disruption okay and Sunadec is uh, trying to figure it out still Oh, Megan, someone's wondering if you have any tricks for learning and memorizing all the different types of organisms that you see. Sure, yeah. Go to the animal guide. That's <laughs> basically the tool that I use to learn all the identifications. Um, so HURL, the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory, had an animal guide before I started working. Um, and that's sort of how I started learning some of the animals but then we realized that a lot of these things are out of date so the hurl animal guide has thus been updated by me with brand new identifications for organisms that have gotten uh, officially um, named and mm -hmm. then other organisms that have changed names so taxonomy changes all the time so it is difficult to keep up with some of the changes in the names of some of the organisms we're seeing as we learn more. Um, so animal guides are really great. You can find them on the OER, NOAA OER website for the Okinawans Explorer. Um, that's one of the guides that I helped develop. Um, there's another guide on the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory archive page, which is the page that I worked on designing and updated the animal guide to. And uh, then there's also an animal guide that I have available on the Papahanao Mokuka Marine National Monument uh, animals that have been observed by Pearl, by Nautilus, and by uh, the Okeanos Explorers. So all the images of animals within the monument are there in that guide. So those are all available online. And you can download the Hurl Guide and the Papahana Mokuakea Guide uh, on those web pages. I've made that available as a zip file. Do be advised, it's about seven gigs worth of imagery. Whoa. Um, I, <laughs> I, I, could, I can only do so much. It's like 5,000 images. Uh, so it's a lot of animals, uh, but it's a really great tool for you know quizzing yourself about animal IDs. If you're watching the dives live and you're like, what's that animal? You can use those images to click through the galleries and maybe find the ID before someone on the ship can say it. That's that's always a fun little thing to do. I like to do that uh, when I'm at work. If I have a live dive streaming, I'm like, ooh, see if I can get it before the experts on the ship can get it. Or if That's they're like, cheap. I don't know what this is, then I can type it into the chat. So I do try to be helpful. <laughs> But also, I have to get work done, so we got a work-life balance. I definitely know. has to be there. It's really hard not to watch the live dives, though. It, they are very fun. It becomes even more challenging if you're trying to annotate a dive, and then you have a live dive. You can't, like, annotate the live dive. You've got to annotate the dive you're supposed to be annotating. <laughs>
someone's wondering about the triangle that you see on the screen. Um, those are actually our, our two lasers that are 10 centimeters apart. So it's a way for us to measure um, things that we're looking at. It just looks like a triangle from the way it is right now. And I see our telecaster issue is worked out. Oh, they got it updated? Well, it's not. It's not showing stuck a, up there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't have the logo in the middle of the screen. Does yep. it work? Yes, we were able to get it caught. Okay, great. It had a, a, a firewall problem on the server that uh. would allow it to get out to uh, uh. talk to its home to verify its license, which it has to do every once in a while. Uh, but our fantastic data engineering group jumped in and fixed that. Lailani, if you see any issues with C-Log, just we'll, we'll find Tim or... Yep, notify data lab right away. Yeah. Is it acting funky? No. Um, the issue has been resolved. Yeah. We were having issues um, with capturing um, from Argus and Herc, mm. the, uh, yeah, last dive, but they fixed it. Good. They, they managed to work around. Perfect. Mm -hmm. But it's fixed now. Good. I saw there was another question about the strata that we saw on the, that steep wall mm. last dive. We still, no, we don't have it figured out yet. Uh, oh, yeah. The uh, geologist is sure, sure we'll be looking into that. We did collect some, two samples, our watch and the subsequent watch, uh, collected samples of the very th thin, crumbly rock from that area, and so maybe that'll help. Yeah. I haven't seen of that anywhere else. Someone's wondering if we have a favorite species of crustacean. Hmm. Hmm. I love the blue crab from Maryland. <laughs> 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 Beautiful swimmer is what their name means. Helenectes sapidus. There you go. I like the crabs that put the anemones on their backs. Oh, yeah. Those are cool. <laughs> yeah, those so are cool. Good ones yesterday. It's like little backpacks. <laughs> yeah, the little parapagurid uh, anemone crabs. Oh, my God, I love them. Dungeness crab. From the Northwest. Yeah. Not king crabs? King crab? I've had king crab fresh out of the water uh, in Alaska, yeah. and I would That's still rather have Dungeness. Wow. Really? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I've had fresh king crab twice. <laughs> once in the Coast Guard and once off of Alvin. We got we had an Alaskan fishery cruise and he just needed to measure the carapace length and then <laughs> <laughs> handed him off. <laughs> well, I've been sure out to you appreciated that cruise. Yeah. I've been out to Nome for the You can't uh, get fresh king crab. That's like impossible. Yeah. <laughs> I've been out to Nome for the finish of the Iditarod several times. Uh, and generally, uh, when we get there, we just start making inquiries around. Uh, and in Norton Sound, just off the off the you know the ice, right out in front of Nome, uh, you can cut a hole in the ice and, and uh, put crab pots down. Oh and, wow! And uh, so we start asking around and see who's who's got crab for sale, and uh, then generally buy a bucket of, of king crab, which is you know a lot, and uh, and then have a little feast for dinner one night. Yeah. And, uh, so right, I mean. Straight out of the water, still, still crawling around, huh. and, uh, but I'd still rather have Dungeness. Really? Yep. Wow. There's a seafood buffet night at the hotel in Dutch Harbor that's pretty famous. <laughs> at, at the Unice, Unice Inn? Yeah. 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 I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. 
There's a place in Rhode Island. It's the Nordic Lodge, and it's all you can eat. Oh my like God, I've been there once. Any <laughs> anything like yeah. seafood. It's a little bit expensive, obviously, but yes. it's <laughs> but it's all you can eat. <laughs> and people you can all you can eat yeah. lobsters and crabs and steaks. People have all like, sorts of strategies like going into it. Like <laughs> I'm gonna fast for the day, or I'm gonna you know oh eat man. this much for breakfast, or do this certain thing, or. No bread. Yeah. yeah, and you can't take anything home. Like you yeah. can't like go and <laughs> eat. fill your pockets. No, you can't. Or <laughs> they start with like the, like the most expensive things first. You know, like oh, you got to get this. Out. I got to eat four lobsters before I get to the oysters or something. Yeah, like that. <laughs> they don't let you do that. Uh, could hurt yourself. Yeah. I like the peacock mantis shrimp. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are cool. A decorator crab. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah, they like put all kinds of stuff. They get real elaborate like arrangements going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bob, you would know, probably know this answer, but what is the deepest that Herc and Argus have ever dove? Uh, well, Herc's limited 4,000 meters, so we're kind of We've, we've gotten close to the we limits like on this We had like 39-something last season. Yeah. It was really up there. I don't know if it was a record or not. Little Herc actually goes deeper. Yeah. I love Little Herc. It's so cute. It's a little hot rod. It's, it's pretty <laughs> fun to fly, really. Yeah. <laughs> I just love standing next to it because you're so used to standing next to Herc and being like, wow, you're large. But then, like, you stand next to little Herc and, you know, you tower yeah. over it. Yeah. It's so cute. <laughs> it's like a coffee table. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. One's a, one's a van and one's a coffee table. <laughs> Someone's wondering what are we going to eat after our shift is over. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be midnight Hawaii time. I feel like a lot of, some people eat, some people go to bed. I don't eat anything. I go right to bed. Mm -hmm. One can dream for Oreos. Oreos. <laughs> I don't think we're getting any. No. If there were Oreos, yeah, I'll definitely eat some. I don't think they will be. I think they're hoarding them till the next cruise. That's not cool. Maybe I'll ask Angelica tomorrow. I have some cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'd be willing to share. Oreos? <laughs> They're not Oreos. Oh, I'm not going to share. <laughs> oh, you guys. Jeez. Oh, I have man. cookies. <laughs> I'm not going to share. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> then I am. <laughs> I just have one little bag of pepperidge <gasps> farm. Oh, uh, my God, Dave. <laughs> they are not. This is the best thing you've ever done. They're not Oreos. <laughs> no, but these are almost better. Did Watch you out, just world. pass cookies back? <laughs> yeah, wow. Cookies. Wait, are those Thin Mints? <gasps> oh, my goodness. I also have a bag of M&Ms, if anyone <laughs> would like some. And Tammy so, has given us some Tammy? sour lychee back here. Uh, Tammy also says that if you're going to eat the cookies, eat them as one bite. No crumbs. Yeah. <laughs> no crumbles. <laughs> one bite. Everyone knows the rules. Yep. One bite. Oh, no, you're kidding. <laughs> no. Thank you. Oh, my God, this is the best night ever. Right. Dave, you just made my whole experience well, out my, here better. My granddaughter and my wife came to visit uh, while we were in the bubble, uh, and they were uh, vacationing in... Uh, in Honolulu without me. Oh. And, uh, and uh, my granddaughter's a Girl Scout, and I had requested, please bring some Girl Scout Leave cookies. them at my door. <laughs> yes. And actually, I went out to the gate and, and met That's them. So nice. We were still at the dock. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so they gave me some Girl Scout cookies. I've been hoarding them, but I thought, yeah, maybe tonight, since we keep talking about Oreos and we don't oh, get yeah. any, I thought I would pass some. I did get a picture on my, to my um, watchmates. way home. Or on my way home, I'm not anywhere near home. I did get a picture the other night that um, my fiance, we ordered a bunch of them and they finally nice. showed up at work. So nice. I'm like, when I get home, there's going to be lots of boxes waiting. Excellent. 
Uh, I was able to get a box of the gluten-free ones oh, yeah. uh, to give to Tammy. That's so nice. Yeah. So. Oh, this is the best. I'm going to save them. <laughs> there's, there's lots in the box. So. We're not going to eat your whole box. Well. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. I, this is the best. I was, I was giving up the whole box for everybody here tonight. No, we. My watchmates. Uh, thin mints. I've missed you. Do you put them in the freezer when you go home? Yeah. Yeah, so do we. In the freezer, it's the best. Any Girl Scouts out there? Shout Good out job. to the Girl Scouts. Shout out to the Girl Scouts. All right, so Megan, what was the crab that was decorating itself? Last time, is that Simpagurus? Simpagurus. I'm finding. I'm looking at one in the animal guide here. Um, Parapagurus. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is Parapaguridae. Yep. <coughs> but then there's this question, uh, Simpa. Simpagurus. Yeah. Yep. So someone's wondering, what is the best depth range for finding wildlife? Is there one? I mean, it depends on what you want to find. They're all wild. <laughs> I don't know. They're not asking. They're just saying wildlife. I don't know. Yeah, there, there's wildlife at every depth. Um, and it's all weird and wonderful. But if you have specific things you're looking for, you might target certain depths. Mm. Say if you're really interested in high density deep sea coral communities, you might want to stay a little bit shallower around the 2000 meter mark. But if you are really interested uh, in precious corals, you might want to go a little bit shallower around, you know, 400 to 500 meters. Um, especially around the Hawaiian Islands, it's a good place to find them. If you want really crazy stuff that you don't know what it is, it's nice to go down to 3,000 meters because that's where we've been finding the craziest stuff. Yeah. You're like uh, that gastropod that we, we saw, and that was down deep. And then down on the abyssal plains, um, it might look boring because, you know, it's flat and sedimenty, but sometimes you find some of the biggest, craziest looking sea cucumbers. The ones I like to call gummy squirrels because they have these long tails that looks kind of like a squirrel tail. They're called psychropodes. Those are always really fun to see. Or up near Stacia Aloha, uh, just north of Oahu, there are these really big urchins. They're like half a football size and, and they're kind of cone-like and they're purple and they have the thinnest test. And they have these commensal clams that live in their gut. Ew. And they're new species to science, haven't been described yet. Um, they're really weird. So there's some really cool big stuff, really, really deep, you know, at four to 5,000 meters. Yeah. Girl Scout cookies, Bob. <laughs> uh, Bob's eyes wide. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so we have someone watching who's not a Girl Scout, but is a proud Canadian girl guide, which is the Canadian kind of version. Glad you're watching. <laughs> I don't know if you sell cookies, but I hope you do. Similar to the Thin Mints. I was a Girl Scout for a long time. Really? Yeah. I only was a brownie. Yeah, I did Girl Scouts through high school. Wow, you really went far. My mom was a leader, so we always did really fun things. Yeah, that's so nice. I just did brownie, and then when the green vest came out, I think, I don't remember what that one was called. Junior? Yeah, yeah. I stopped after that. I was a Boy Scout most of the way through high school. Really? Yeah. So I turned 16 and got a driver's license and that kind of stuff. <laughs> a motorcycle. Yeah. 
I was with the Boy Scout till I was 17, and my troop folded, unfortunately. Uh, I was, uh, oh, what, five merit badges and a service project away from Eagle? Ah. I always wanted to be Eagle Scout, but never quite made it. Megan, someone's wondering if you can repeat the name of the photo ID resource again. Um, so there are a few of them. There is the OER, um, Oceanus Explorer Deep Sea Animal Guide. Um, that's on oceanexplorer.noaa.gov. Then there is the Hurl Deep Sea Animal Guide that's on the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory Archive site, um, which is part of the University of Hawaii's SOEST website. Uh, I guess I could read that out, but it might be easier just to post a link somewhere. Um, the, the link is kind of long. Um, but if you Google Hurl Archive, it should be one of the first. That's H-U-R-L? Yeah, H-U-R-L. It should be one of the first things that comes up. Okay. And then um, the Papa Now Mokokea guide is a similar URL, um, but instead of slash hurl, it's slash PMNM. Great, thank you. Yeah. There's someone watching who is a museology student, um, and they want to know what our favorite museums and education outreach centers are. I've never heard of a museology degree, like museums. Uh, right? That's a cool degree, yeah. That's awesome. Okay, favorite museum and education outreach center. Oh, that's a tough one. You're not on us. I can't hear. I think the uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium would qualify. Oh my God, as I love the Monterey Bay Aquarium. That's a, uh, yeah, they're a world. That's leader. a spectacular aquarium. And it's in Monterey. <laughs> it's <laughs> also very cool. That's true. That's on my list of places to go this summer when I'm in California. I haven't oh, been there yet. So right. good. Yeah. So nice. Monterey's great. Mm -hmm. And there's the uh, aquarium is one. I'm excited. Uh, I like the Field Museum in Chicago. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Shed Aquarium in, in Chicago. Yeah, I was just good. at the Shed Aquarium when oh, I was yeah? visiting family for the holidays. Nice. That was nice. It was nice to go back there. I hadn't been since I was a kid. I live really close to Mystic, Connecticut, and I'm really, um, I mean, I used to work at Mystic Aquarium, so I'm a little biased because I like them, but um, I also really enjoy Mystic Seaport. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is basically they've taken this plot of land right on the um, river and turned it into an old whaling village. And all of these buildings are um, were transported there or built to replicate um, an old whale whaling town. And you get to like walk around and basically it's like a living museum almost. And you can walk around and learn about whaling and fishing communities and how everyone survived and in New England doing that. Um, and then they also are uh, repairing old whaling vessels, old wooden ships. So you get to go and watch them do that and walk around on them and learn a bit about that. I think that's, that's a really neat experience to, to go and see all that. That's really cool. I did a interaction with the Mystic Aquarium when I sailed on the Okeanos. Yeah. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. That's how I actually got this job was Mystic Aquarium. Nice. Yeah, I used to do Nautilus shows, like just like we do here for Ship to Shore Interactions. Um, I used to host them at Mystic Aquarium when I worked there, and this is back in uh, 2012. And um, I was just graduating college and was hosting, and I met Dr. Ballard, and he was like, oh, I'm starting a production team. You should come, come meet everyone in Rhode Island at the Graduate yeah. School of Oceanography. And I was like, okay. And then I did, and then... <laughs> Poor Mystic Aquarium, I quit and joined Ocean <laughs> Exploration Trust, and now I've been here ever since, and coming up on 10 years now. I love yeah. their uh, beluga exhibit. Yeah. It's oh, like yeah. My, f my favorite exhibit. It's any, the biggest any one. Zoo and, or any um, I forgot how. They're so interactive and East like Coast, maybe? so intelligent. They are. They, they're they so intelligent. They'll like, they'll like lure little kids in and then like scare them. 
<laughs> with like they like make a face and then like squirt water at them or like make a bubble and like blow it really fast at the at the glass <laughs> and the kid will like scream. It's, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> they are really smart. Yeah. Personable. Yeah. Available. I also love the Boston Public Library. If anyone gets a chance to go, it's very historic. I mean, anything in Boston is usually historic, but mm -hmm. the library is its a really beautiful place. Have you ever been to the uh, Whaling Museum, Kelly? In, in New Bedford? New Bedford? No, but I've seen pictures. I want to go eventually. Yeah, they have like the. F they full, have a huge uh, whale, right? Yeah, full whale skeleton, like hanging from the ceiling. It's pretty cool. That's really cool. I've been to the aquarium in Osaka, Japan, and uh, they have a big tank with whale sharks, and they also have giant isopods. Whoa. Yeah. So that was really cool. I yeah, really like the cool. isopods. And they had a chimera, too. Oh. I went to one in Tokyo that had, like, um, sea angels. That one was my favorite tank. Oh, those are I cute. I just stood there for the longest time looking at the sea angels. The uh, Bishop Museum in Yeah, Oahu I haven't gone. Very nice, well worth it. You've been? Yeah, the last time I'm in town. Yeah, a lot of our samples are archived there too. So like in terms of museology, there are archives at the Bishop Museum that huh. have samples from the Okeanos Explorer Expeditions during their capstone mission um, between 2015 and 2017. Um, and Hurl, um, our samples collected by the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory. So you can request those samples if you're interested in studying those organisms. Hmm. Eight more minutes. For our viewer wondering how long we're on the ship for, um, we this exhibition is about three weeks. So we're just coming up on our third week right now. Um, actually, a week from today. Today's Tuesday? Yeah, a week from today. We'll be getting back in to Honolulu. So um, just one more week left out here, but we've been out here for two. So. Each of our trips this year are about about three weeks uh, in length. And we have um, a multiple expeditions this year going um, from now, or the first one of the year, going until about mid-October. So lots more exploring to do in various locations around um, the Pacific Islands and also Hawaii. We get back to port on April 5th. Um, we'll have two days in port, and then the next expedition will start April 7th with new broadcasts and new people on board and um, new locations. So excited to watch that one from home. And they'll be heading up um, to the Lilikalani Ridge up in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, which is north of the Hawaiian Islands. Someone says they're getting a good feeling about this dive. <laughs> good. Need yeah, good that's vibes. very good. We good need all vibes. those good vibes. I have my lucky socks on. So. Oh, good, good. Yep. Do you really have lucky socks? Yep. <laughs> what do they look like? It's my. It has my family's, my family's dog on it. Oh, how cute! And she's wearing a bucket hat. <laughs> that's adorable. I can see why they're lucky. Yep. I need yeah, that. I, I need it. Yeah, I need socks with my dog. With my dog on that. There's got to be, like, somewhere online where you can get customized. Oh, there is. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure Etsy has. We got them from my brother once for Christmas because he likes the dogs at our dog, and it's the same thing as Jake, like a picture of I'm gonna look it up our right. dog. Yep, these were a Christmas gift, the same thing. Yep. <laughs> There's definitely groups that do it. Well, I have my coral shoes on. 
Okay, good. Positive yeah. vibes. Mm -hmm. Good corals. <laughs> Customized dog socks. <laughs> Well, someone's wondering how many dives per expedition do we typically do? It ranges. It ranges, yeah. Yeah. I think it's we had 13 in, in A134. That was but they were short. That was uh, crazy. There were 12 hour dives. This one we have, uh, we did seven, eight. I think we started with 1906 and we're on 1913. Yeah. Yep. A few were curtailed. Yeah, it really just depends on weather and conditions and how the ROVs are doing. and So it just depends. We plan out a lot. We had a, we had a good game plan coming down here. Um, and then you just kind of go from there and figure out what you can and cannot do. Yep. But we've had some pretty good dives, even though not as many as I think we hoped for this cruise due to weather. but. The ones we have done have been pretty good. Yeah. I don't remember if it was Seamount Alpha or uh, Kingman, where we, it was the final, you know, we were near the end. It was, uh, it was Megan, it was the one where you're saying the north side is probably the good one. <laughs> but, but we actually ended up seeing a really high diversity. Yeah, high yeah diversity. usually the northern sides are, are better. Uh, places to find good high density coral communities but you know that's not always true yeah. it really depends on the topography and the way the currents are flowing in the area so you can find really nice areas uh, on the west side or in the lee of the current mm -hmm. it just has to be you know the right conditions for those corals to settle and grow so areas that are highly sedimented aren't usually the best areas for coral community growth um, and that's why we usually you know hedge our bets and stick to those northern sites where generally you have less sediment but when we have weather we need to go to a more protected area it's more protected and that means that you know you're gonna find more sediment because it's more t protected you're not getting those high currents which we didn't we couldn't dive in um, but also would have been really good for corals, you know? So it's like you're balancing things. Yeah. And usually if it's difficult to dive there, it's likely going to have really nice coral communities. Mm, getting close. About 50 meters or so. A bit more than that. About a hundred. For a viewer wondering how to apply to join a group like this, um, it really depends on what you want to do. Um, we have opportunities for educators, either formal, like in classrooms or informal, uh, anyone who works in science centers, museums, aquariums, uh, they can apply to come out as a science communication fellow. Uh, we also have internships for students who are um, in undergrad programs or graduate programs or recently graduated from school um, to come out as an intern in either ROV engineering, video engineering, uh, ocean science, or seafloor mapping. And um, otherwise, um, besides those two opportunities for students and educators, we, you know, on occasion do have employment opportunities and that would be under the about tab on our homepage. So uh, feel free to check that out and see if there's an opportunity that you think uh, fits your skill set. And that's just for Nautilus. So there's other vessels who need contractors or um, have programs uh, like ours with internships. So definitely just you know looking up or Googling places either near you um, or uh, 
uh, even globally, that have exploration vessels or robotics or ROVs. Um, I'm sure you can find a pretty cool opportunity. Thirty-one hundred. Stop. Oh, bottom. Nice and sandy like I thought. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go northeast. Zero six zero. Sound good? So we had a bottom depth of thirty one forty or so. How high off the bottoms hurt? About ten meters. Let me know when you're ready for TVL. All right. Do the do. Looks like we've got a little fish out there. Yeah, that might be an eel. Life. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of cutthroat eels on our dives, uh, which I'm surprised. Usually we see a lot of those. Extra spicy pork. How's out there? So cold water temperature down here. Yeah. Better. Cold just looking at it. One point six five Celsius. Okay, white balance complete.
Oh, didn't hold. <laughs> Arm. That was a blue button. That was a green button. I think our little eel friend is coming for a visit. Hello. Zoom in. He's coming on in here. Yeah, so this is a uh, cutthroat eel. They call them that because their gill slits are on the underside of the, the head, so it looks like um, their throat is cut. Hmm. But they're perfectly happy eels. This one has a very stubby pectoral fin. <laughs> Normally they're a little larger than that, so. It's like Nemo, you know? <laughs> so this one might be in the Iliopinae. A subfamily of the Synaphobrinkidae. Ah, uh, there's that display. Yep, they always shake their heads like that when they get close to the ROV. Why? Uh, Territorial? Yeah, they, they, uh, they're the predators down here, so obviously you saw it heading straight for us uh, after we landed. So it was curious, checking out what's going on, um, and then they, they do that display behavior for a couple couple reasons are an option um, one like they kind of it's like oh hey this is really bright or noisy like what's going on kind of loosen his brain up mm. like, oh, okay um, could be uh, sort of an aggressive move uh, but I'm not sure ready to get moving yeah all right let's get moving yeah let's find a rock Rocks. bridge now Can we make a 30 meter move, zero six zero? There's another little fish up in the upper right there. Someone's wondering what the our favorite camera view would be from a viewer's perspective, not ours. I mean, obviously, like Herx is great, but so is Argus. So quad, maybe <laughs> you can watch everything, or have multiple monitors and watch multiple things. Yeah, it's hard to, to it's hard choose to a pick. monitor. I know they all have something good at some point. My like quad's a little small, but you can watch everything, which is really nice. Well, what was that that we passed? The is shrimp. That? Oh, yeah, there's a little shrimp. No, the, uh, it looked like... Um, the Umbalula coral? Yeah. 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 Umbalula. 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 What's this little fish? Zoom in, Dave. Aw. Look at his little head. He looks like a skeleton. <laughs> A school and so a this body. is a cuskiel. A wee one. A wee one. <laughs> this is probably Acanthonus armatus. Um, so a type of cuskiel. Its common name is a bit silly.
pretty skinny. Yeah, it's yeah. very small. So this might be a juvenile, because they definitely get a lot larger than this. Oh, this was that one with the inappropriate name. Yeah. else is around here. Lots of sand. Something. That looks swimming. like a different fish. Huh. Yeah. Or is that the same one as before? Might be the same guy. Yeah. No, that that might be yeah. a different that's a different cuskill. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a different cuskill that we're looking at. Hmm. Three fish right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot I of fish. He's got some attached to him or something. Or is that is that the gill? Um, uh, that yeah, that's its gill opening. Uh, but these fish often do have parasites on them. Megan, someone's wondering, um, they've noticed that you call out bridge before we make any movements. Um, they're wondering, is there a particular reason for this? Um, that's so the bridge knows that I'm talking to them. Uh, so basically I can toggle on to speak directly to the bridge and that way George, who's up on the bridge right now, knows that I would like his attention, and then he will call back to me, which you can't hear because he's not on SPL. Um, and then I'll tell him where we would like to go. And then he'll input it, the directions, uh, into our DP system, and the ship will take us there. Okay, carrying on. Goodbye. I think that was all those good vibes we were getting yeah. from our watchers. Mm -hmm. Plenty fish so far. So we got lots of fish right off the bat. Perfect. There's a bunch of umbalulas around here. It's very wavy. Mm -hmm. Sand ripples, but they're cross, cross pattern, two different directions. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's because of tidal influence to the currents down here? Maybe. Yeah, I've never seen it like this. Porch light off. Doesn't make a difference. Bridge nav. Can we make another thirty meter move zero six zero? Thanks. Ooh. 
someone's wondering, what are the oxygen levels at this depth? I think you are fairly high. Bring it up in just a sec. One ohm. Hundred and three point six micromoles per liter. Hmm. It's a little urchin. So this is another one of those Aspida diadema. We saw some of these yes or this morning, yesterday. It's all together. It's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> so these uh, urchins have these really long spines. Lots of them. Yep, for a stroll. Yep. You know, it always surprises me how fast some of these urchins can move. You always think they move slowly, but, you know, if they really want to, they, they can really take off and <laughs> gallop across the seafloor. <laughs> Especially some of the pancake urchins. They can zoom. Good. Yeah, yeah, good. Moving on. We gotta move in, move on. Yep, we have a move on. We're doing 30 meter moves right now right. Uh, until we start seeing rocks. This isn't nearly as flocculent as that stuff we had yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's more sandy. Got a blob, Dave. <laughs> blob. Uh, zoom in. Go, go blob. Go blob. Go blob. <laughs> <laughs> What's this weird thing? Huh? Uh, <laughs> still a blob. It's still, still a blob. blob. <laughs> it's so dark. Wow. So cucumber. dark. It's a cucumber. I think it's a cucumber. All bunched up. It's very dark. It's definitely the darkest cucumber I've seen. Yeah. But it just looks too pudgy. <laughs> what is going on with you? What are you? Just doing yoga. It's so bumpy. <laughs> it's very <laughs> ball-like. I mean, ball. it, it could it could <laughs> be a pleurobranch too. We did see some of those before. Yeah. They're usually more brown, but this one's really dark. Like, cause I see that little yeah, like eye, you know, on the stalk, like an eye stalk coming out mm -hmm. there from the side. Let's see that little white bit there. Oh yeah, there's something walking on the seafloor. I think that's a ophiuroid, a uh, brittle star. Oh, I see that, yeah. That's so tiny. 
<laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to change my answer uh, to this is a pleurobranch and not a cucumber. Huh. It's a big one. It is. Oh, do we have lasers out? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's still kind of oh, small. Yeah, like, small. You know, maybe three inches. You know, good, yeah. good, cute size. If it was stretched out, yeah. Could maybe, yeah, be, maybe yeah. if it stretched itself out, it could be four inches long. Mm -hmm. Oh. <coughs> really, really dark. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's collected any of these from this depth. I don't know much about them. Yeah, let's keep it Usually you see them, like, mm. shallower. Hmm. Hmm. Are we getting shots in the still camera? Let's see here. Should be taking shots, too, every... I think 10 seconds, yes. Steve has it yes. set up. China. Oh yeah, the porch lights might help. It's still really dark. Yeah, it just looks like a little, little ball on the ground. Yeah, it doesn't look like much in the still. What do you think, Emil? Should we collect this? Let's keep an eye out for more. Okay. Zoom in, Dave. <laughs> it's just, it's just so, so hard to see anything. I know, yeah. I'm like, like almost looks like a rock. Almost, I mean, I know it's not, but it's definitely alive. What's the little white widget there? Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, it's Parasite got a little or? something something on it. It's probably just like sand or something <coughs> that's stuck on it. Animal, mineral, or vegetable? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a vegetable. <laughs> that would imply it's a plant and there are no plants down here. Eggplant. Okay. Eggplant. <laughs> Deep sea eggplant. Dave, you're getting some compliments. Nice zoom on blob. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, one of the blobbiest blobs we've got so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a full blob. <laughs> All right. Carrying on from the blob? Yeah. yeah. Bridge that was now. Cool, though. Mm. We're going to let sleeping blobs lie. Goodbye, blob. <laughs> Can we do a 30 meter move, 060? If we see one, how do you think it should be collected? Um, suction. Yeah. You think it'll fit? It should fit. Three inches. It was a little one. Yeah, it was a little. It was small enough to fit through the holes, and they're squishy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we find a fatter one, you can still suction it and then deposit it in the box. That's true. Yep. So the end of the nozzle is the smallest yeah. part of the intake system there. So if it fits in the nozzle, it should fit all the way through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that doesn't work, but... Yeah, well, especially for corals, because they they're long. Yeah. If they don't bend around those corners. Rigid, yeah. The rigid ones are tough. There's a small blob. We did change up the slurp hose this season. Is it, it used to be... Uh, you know, opaque, you couldn't see through it. And now we have clear hose the whole way, so you can tell if something's jammed in there. Huh. You want to look at this? Zoom in. Mm -hmm. 
It's a cucumber. For reals this time. Yep. A sea pig? Yep. It's going to take off. Doesn't have as much sand inside. Yeah, but it's still going to yeah. release yeah. some ballast. S eject. <laughs> Less weight for the takeoff. <laughs> There's some, let's just say up here. Uh, optical delusion. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a little umbalula, bottom of the screen. There's lots of umbalulas around here. Yeah. You could have like a whole bouquet of umbalulas. <laughs> the waves on the Argus view are kind of cool, like you just see. Oh yeah. It's mesmerizing. Dave, can you put Argus on the bigger screen in front of Jake? Like next oh, to I can her? Do it. Oh. Unless you need to, unless you need to watch that. He doesn't need to watch. Not that. anymore. <laughs> nope. Another urchin. Yep, another one of those is spit a diadema urchins. That is a good Dargus shot. Right, it's just yeah. all around it. You get those. Yep. Thanks. It's like you're at an undisturbed beach. <laughs> it is an undisturbed beach. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> we're the first ones ever to be here. <laughs> so we're definitely going up a slope, but uh, yeah. <laughs> no rocks. No rocks. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. There might be some rocks off to the right. I don't know, I see them kind of. We'll see, hopefully soon. Bridge nav. Can we make a 30 meter move, zero six zero? We see a cutthroat and two cusk eels. Is that it? Yep. Two different kinds of cusk eels, too. Ah. Oh, a sea cucumber. It's on the move. Someone's wondering if there's any qualified blobologists. Blobologists? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a real thing yet. Should be.
You say Oompa Loompa. Oompa Loompa. Oompa Loompa. I can like hear Leilani quietly oh, in the shit. background. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of them. So someone's wondering um, what type of sediment is this? Is it sand or is it just piles of marine snow or a mixture of both? Anyone know? Uh, well, biogenic, we're not near any land sources. So this is all raining down from above. Not, not quite sure what's blooming up there. Um, Foraminifera shells, maybe silicate, silicate based. Yeah. Yeah, maybe like radiolarians, diatoms. Right. Probably worked over good by all of these bottom feeders. now. Can we do a 50 meter move, 060? So how do I spell that blob, that pur dark purple blob? The Pleurobrink? Yeah. P-U-E-L-P-L-E-U-R-O-B-R-A-N-C-H-I-A. So, Bob or Jake, someone's wondering, does the type of sediment make a difference in how you pilot the vehicles when getting samples? Yeah, yeah, like if it's uh, a, a lot of things kind of factor in there. Um, depends on the current and the type of sediment it is. Um, the angle of the vehicle. Like, uh, like uh, yesterday we were, our course was kind of across the um, slope. Mm -hmm. Cross slope is bad because the thrusters are close to the slope on the one side. So that's why I tend to face into the slope. So you'll want to set up, like if you're going to land, you want to come in very gently if it's uh, sediment. You also like kind of use the current to your advantage. So when you set up that it's blowing across the the front of the basket instead of at you or from behind, because uh, it kind of sets up an eddy. Mm -hmm. If it's coming from behind, it comes over the ROV and then it 
it creates like an eddy and the, all the silt will just hang right there. So yeah, a lot of that you gotta think about when you're setting up. Yeah, a lot of sediment can be, if it's coarser, it doesn't stay suspended as long, but in places yeah, like... Yeah, this is, this is, seems to be coarser. Yeah, yeah. so it doesn't fly up yeah. like the stuff from the, the other yeah, day. Yeah, yesterday was like Some places you just, fluffy. you don't want to sit down at all because it's, if it's like kind of sticky. Yeah, like sticky uh, mud, like yeah. on the Sticks abyssal the plains. Yeah. Yeah. It'll just, it'll stay su suspended for a really long time and it sticks to everything. I mean, this is a sort of well-behaved sediment here. You can I'll just set it down. <laughs> good, good job, sediment. sediment. Good sediment. Yeah. It is good sediment. <laughs> Probably because there seems to be a lot more current here, too. So yeah. that's why we're seeing all that ripple effect. So the light stuff is moving on. Yeah, swept away, I guess so. Like, you just want to come in real soft into this. And then it depends on the kind of sample you're doing. If you're doing a tube core, you need to kind of drive down into the sediment to, to get planted well. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> you know, if you're just picking something up off the bottom, you can just barely yeah. set down. This is see, it's not really sticking on there. Yeah. Yeah, it's barely moving. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's got a little bit of dust, but it's not. Nothing like yesterday, yeah, side where yesterday there was just not. everywhere. That's a nice find. Yeah, that one's yeah. also curled up in the photo and it has yeah. the question mark plural yeah. branchidae. And if you zoom into our capture, it has like the same kind of texture on the, on its body. Yeah, hmm. so also observed in the line islands, yeah. Mm -hmm. That looks like it. What depth was that one seen at? Oh, let's see here. Let me go back. It's, uh, between one and three thousand. Okay. So they just got a continuous move going. Uh, I just did a fifty meter move. We're almost done with it. Okay. Thought I'd yeah. make bigger steps since we didn't find any rocks. Yeah. Yeah, just keep them rolling unless yeah, we need to wait. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah. I'm at the end of the leash about here. Bridge now. Can we make a 50 meter move? Zero, six, zero. How fast is he going? Point three. You want to speed up to point five? Yeah, we could go faster until we start to see stuff there. That'd be good. Yeah. Bridge nav. Already showed our. Could we increase our speed to point five knots? Sixty meters off. Maybe. Thanks. The what? Argus sonar, like, there's an oh. increase in slope, like sixty meters away. Yeah. Pretty far. <laughs> yeah, this area is supposed to be relatively sloped, but um, yeah, it's not hard substrate. There's something bobbing in front of Argus. 
I think it's a cucumber. It's probably one of those cucumbers. Maybe one of the ones we passed. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> What are the contour lines? Uh, the blacks are 10 and the whites are 50. Huh. I can never see myself there. Right. Yeah, this right there. you're right here. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, it would be nice if it was... Well, I want this to have the map. Yeah, that would be nice. That's how everybody else has it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just wants to be like everybody else. I do. <laughs> Yeah, I like having the map and being able to toggle it on and off really easily, where you just yeah. you click a button. Well, this, this is capable of having multiple yeah. underlays just He's, like that. Yeah, you can just, just toggle them on and off. And you can make them, like, darker, mm -hmm. so they're just, you know, just barely there. I like transparent, uh, almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Change the transparency setting. Yeah, Green Seas offers that yeah. ability. Yeah, the high pack, you have to, like, go into a menu and then find your layer and then click it on and off. Yeah, it's got too many whistles it's, and it's bells. It's got lots of, <laughs> it, yeah, it's got lots of things. It's a little more challenging to find your stuff. It's useful, yeah, but I like if you want to do things quickly. What people do is they make the map in high pack and then they import, import it, into it into here. Import it into here, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I like to make maps in ArcGIS. Yeah. And then I'll import them as GeoTIFFs. Yeah, this just takes a, an image like a the GeoTIFF. Well, GeoTIFF has the coordinates built into the mm -hmm. file. Yeah. This has a separate um, coordinate file. You just define the corners. Yep. Yeah. And that's how you make a geofiff, you define the corners. So it's, it's built into the file mm -hmm. format. This doesn't. Oh, that doesn't, it doesn't take that? Have, no. Oh, so you have to like know your corners. Yeah. That's fair. And then you can have a target file that's just X's and Y's. Yep. And well, in um, UTM, right? Okay, is like a YML format that you have to bring them in with, or like is there a specific formatting it's, it's it needs to have? It's just a text file. Oh, just a text yeah, file? Yeah, it's just a common delimited text file. Okay, yeah. We make those for our high packs, so probably the same format would work for yeah. RovNav. But for some reason, this particular version won't let you import map files. There's some, some weirdness with it. Hmm. But we're phasing this out, and there's a new version of this. Okay, so soon we'll be... Soon, yeah. In the future. It's been soon for a, a while, but... <laughs> <laughs> when will then be now? Yeah, that's what I keep asking. <laughs> yeah. It's one less screen. Well, I, I don't know. Or I'd, I don't know. I think they're still going <laughs> to... It's actually be more load for the Navigesser because then they're going to have to make this work too. <laughs> Bridge now. Can we make another 50 meter move? 060. Thanks. We'll just add it to our checklist, you know? Yep. Yep. We already have three pages. That's fine. Okay. Checklists are really great, though. That way you make sure you get everything done yeah. in the right order. We need to add our... Uh plugs in the side of the sample boxes to our uh, checklist. Maybe, the, maybe, <laughs> maybe bumping out the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. 
Yeah, those well, are not specific. Why don't you fill the boxes with water before we launch? Um, well, we could. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't but sound very convincing. That that's on <laughs> a different checklist <laughs> for a different vehicle, but it's something we started doing. Well, we do fill like the sample jars are. You have to fill those with water. Mm -hmm. Ooh, rock. Because they're worried about them imploding. Rock. Yeah. Good job, Eloni. Oh. All right. Something's rock. happening. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm always a bit reluctant to add more steps because mm -hmm. it makes the oh, post times longer. So, <laughs> you know, it all adds up. Let's see if. Uh, so I guess we can. Are we done with the move? Or? Oh. Uh, I. We're about halfway into a move. Yeah. Do you have a uh, time to stop? Would you like what do to you stop? Do? Grab a rock? Yeah. Uh, if we see a good If we don't candidate. spend too much time shopping. What about a Jake yeah, those ready. Ones. Jake There's one right Jake up there. Be. Yeah, these guys. Getting ready. Yeah, this one looks a bit angular. Let me get it out there. Okay, do it. Maybe the smaller one. The one in yeah, the back. This one. You want me to move up? One, oh, one move more. The one behind it. Oh. One more. You're close. There yeah, that one. Go. There we go. Don't be stuck. Come on. Uh oh. Are we going to move up? Uh. Yay. All right. Well, almost. I'm just going to find it. <laughs> All right. That looks pretty I'm good. That looks pick good. Pick up and start moving. Yep. That's pretty angular. I'd say so. That's a good rock. It's kind of circle, but I see angles. It might be subangular. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's that's a geology term. Okay, <laughs> so we want to go uh, starboard. Small, starboard A, yeah, yeah. One of the small ones. Pretty awkward grab I got on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I kind of just went for it. In the it's working of the though. Cloud. Yeah. You can hang on to it and I'll zip forward and then we could uh, put it away. All right. This is 83. Yes. Start working it over there. Yep. Ready to go sample mode? Go for it. Spinning around. Ready for the box? Ready. Start. 
Starboard day. There we go. Perfect. Oh. oh. Too, too chunky. You get it in there. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Rock. Hmm. Well, oh. could go with a bigger box. Oh, that was very deceiving. Thought it would fit in there. <laughs> It'll go. It just barely. Just gotta get the angle oh, right. It's gonna go into the bigger one. That would be all right. It's just round enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. We can put it in E. Is that light flickering? Yeah. Oh. Boom. Slam dunk. Right. Perfect. <laughs> Sample 83. Oh, that's interesting. What's yeah. that flickering? Yeah. That's when I thrust up. Really? Mm. Yeah. Huh. I'll make note of that. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Bring the box in. Good job, Jake. Box is really just slow. another nice, uh, another nice one there. Do we want more from the same place? I don't know. That's not very, that's not terribly angular. I have a feeling we'll be we able to find moving. something that looks a little more in place and not so dusty. Yeah, probably. Maybe we could get into a place that has some broken pillows. Those are usually good places for samples. That'll be a good crust sample, yeah. Yeah. stock crinoid. It's got a bunch of brittle stars on it. Yes, we'll have to go back to slower moves. After yep, this. we're definitely going to switch to slow, yeah. slow zone now that we found what we're looking for. Nice crusty rocks. Cucumber down there. It looks pretty steep right there. Uh, I don't know. Are I think that's just a shadow. a shadow. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're done. Perfect. We're not moving. I'm going to wait till we get closer before I make another one. That looks pretty. Yeah. It's pretty steep. Yeah. yeah. There's a bath of bathies. Yeah. I want to be out in front, too. So coming up, Jake. Coming up. Wow. Yeah, the Argus shot is cool. Super rock. It's crazy how we went with like full sand <laughs> on what yeah. appeared to be the steepest slope. Now that we're at like the shallower slope, it's a little more rocky. Just a bit. Yeah, that's a pretty sharp edge. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, let's see it over that. Uh, wow. Gotta be stuff at the top of this, huh? You wanna look at that guy? Um, no, we can pass okay. on that. That's just another stock crinoid. This is so steep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might you want to back off from that wall. Yeah. You wanna back up? Yeah. All right. We're still Argus not seen over the top some, here. Some swing left too. All right. Yeah. You wanna go left? Or just back just the loop? Back. Okay. Bridge now. No, don't. Oh, I pulled up. You're on me too much. Can there. we make uh, a 20 meter move to four zero? because there's not like much light on them. Maybe starting to see over the top, maybe. Yeah, a little, maybe a little bit. It's like a hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like you're like looking down a well or something. Yeah. That's very lava-y. Yep. Oh, there's the sponge yeah. off on the left side. You like think we're getting to the top and then it just kind of keeps going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it looks like we're mountains do that <laughs> sometimes. <Yeah. laughs> False peak. Yeah, the shapes that count for is in this area kind of make a see over the top S curve. There. Yeah. You want to look at this sponge? Yeah, let's take a look at that sponge. Yeah, we're kind of pushing the envelope here, I think. Sorry. I yeah, can't no look at this sponge. That's a wow. bolosoma. You have really good eyesight. Yeah. Like the fact that you can ID from a distance is very impressive. <laughs> That's <laughs> only because of zooms. I've seen enough zooms <laughs> to know what things look like. So I could see that there is the osculum at the top as we were getting closer. Um, and then it has that sort of concave surface on one side. So that's a bolosoma. It's a stock sponge in the family Euplectility. But if I had never zoomed it before, I wouldn't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, look at that light. Anytime I thrust it, it goes. So it, you know what's wrong there? I'll bet you. I'll bet you it's just dangling. The light? Yeah. Oh, wow. so like it's in the thrust and it just wavers? It's just w wobbling uh, around in I the see. Light. That makes sense. It's not, it's not flickering, it's w waving Came around in a breeze. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
What light is it? It's the, it's the one over the, it's our port and starboard light, one on each side oh. on that circuit. Yeah, I mean, you could probably zoom in with Argus and see it. Yeah. Kind of looks like there's no light. It's right next to the thruster. Uh, I don't know. Huh. Hard to tell. Yeah. I think it's. It looks like it's still attached. Huh. In a safe setup now with Argus. Safe fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still behind. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. And well, someone's wondering, um, are the currents typically calm this deep down? Uh, the steady currents are typically very slow at this depth. Uh, the, uh, what's the Argus going? Because you got the tilt off. Yeah. Tidally. I just, I just put it oh. off. Driven Boy. waves could be. <laughs> it seemed to like look at it, right? I know, every time. <laughs> <laughs> could cause occasionally strong currents. Yeah, Argus has settled out, and it looks like the DVL has meandered a bit as we came well, up this yeah, wall. Well, we got beyond its range. It's only yeah. picking up three beams. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are some nice angular rocks in this area. Oh, and spotted a broken pillow on the right side. See that sort of lobey thing that looks oh, like it yeah. has sort of star fracturing pattern. You're looking in here? Yep, right over there. I gotta stand in for Coralie with her geology knowledge. Right. <laughs> So we're off the wall. And looks like it's flatter. Maybe. Mm -hmm. There's a few rocks right up where the lasers are. I don't know if they're good enough. Yeah, I want looking for so something a little cleaner, maybe. Yeah. Now, oh, Emil, do you want to go to sort of this local high and then shoot over to waypoint three, or do we want to just sort of make a beeline? <coughs> Point out the local high again, just right that here. tongue. This little uh, tongue so shape. I don't think we need to. I mean, we'll. we'll We're kind of going to yeah, clip we'll it as we it. go by. Yeah. Okay. You want to reset Doppler? Yep. Me up. I just wasn't paying attention to that. There you go. All right. Well, I guess we need another move. Okay, and let's get a move on. Get a move on. Bridge now. Can we make a 20 meter move, 055 at 0.3 knots? Any of those right below you, Herc? Like looking at the Argus view, it looks like there's Thanks. a little ledge that maybe there's some loose crusty rocks. You want to draw on where you're talking? Yeah, uh, well, I can't draw on the Argus view. Oh, you got my Argus view. Um, but how uh, about right so here? Somewhere down here. I see a bunch. Right on the right side. Little wedges. Over in yeah. here. Yeah, right in there. Looks like some candidates. Yeah. All right, Jake. All right. Let's see. It might be a little large. Yeah. yeah these are pretty huge. Oh, they are. Those are big rocks. It's hard to tell until the lasers get I on know. them. You're mm -hmm. like, oh, my. <laughs> 
those are boulders. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the rocks that came up from the last time was huge. Oh, yeah. Ginormous. Heavy? Yeah. <laughs> it was like this big. Oh. <laughs> Where'd they put that? I have no idea. We were wondering the same thing. <laughs> These kind of have a lot of sediment on them, too. What watch got that big rock? What about no dead cool. center? Um, we're just to the left of the lasers. The little guy? That, that sort In of there? little triangle one. The no. super yeah, that one. Oh, okay. Which one? It, the lasers are right above it. Is that too sedimented? Might be attached. Might be I think attached. It's kind of, I think it's kind of too sedimenty for coral. Mm -hmm. like. Yeah. She usually goes for like the really dark ones. What's well, that black one there? Behind it? Yeah. Is that just a shadow or? Yeah, that's, I think, a, a oh sharp, yeah, I straight see. edge. Mm -hmm. I see it now. <laughs> Anything? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not convinced on any of their ideal. The ones I like the best are way too large. Yeah. yeah. I feel like if she was here, she wouldn't want that coating of sediment on them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pretty happy with the last one, that first collection. It was good. Yeah. Good depth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And well, you might be able to help, or any of the science team, but they're wondering why we need angular rocks. Like, why are we looking for rocks with a lot of angles on them? Um, we want to look at uh, some basalt that's not altered, not chemically altered, uh, so that we could determine the age when that lava was, you know, when that was created. Um, Did you, you log the light flickering? Probably not attached. So angular means yeah, it's I probably it. broken off. Seems to be when you thrust. Yeah. Broken well, off it's of basalt like flow. Like it's like off mm -hmm. and then. When you yeah. thrust, it comes on. I don't think the light itself is like it's not an electrical flicker. It's a bit the more rounded it's, rocks it's are probably stuff. encrusted with ferro ferromanganese crust, and that's good for Corley's work. But the lab that Amber on the left side, right there, is working in is working on mm. geochronology. Like yeah, what's that? I'm trying to date these seamounts. Zoom in, Dave. Something deep red. Sea star. Oh, I get yep, that. looks like a I slime got my joy star. All cranked up. Yeah. Slime star with four arms. Looks like it's opening its arms? madreporite. Oh, nope, close not it. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> a little shy. Need to make the Star Trek door opening so <laughs> <laughs> is this hymenaster it is <laughs> very good I'm learning All right. cool i'm good on the star whenever you're ready yeah it's a good color though oh you mean move on yeah we done yeah that. make a good throw pillow <laughs> <laughs> it would make a good throw pillow <laughs> there's actually um this pillow that i want to get on etsy uh, that looks like terraster I don't know what that means. It's a different it, it, kind it, of. It's a. It looks similar to Hymenaster, but it's white and kind of has a really nice surface texture. <laughs> <laughs> and if you put it like side by side with a guide, it's almost an exact match. And I'm like, wow, yeah, this will go really well was with that my done ocean on themed house. Or it just happened. It just happened to be <laughs> that way. I think it was just supposed to be a cute, you know, throw pillow for your home and I was like this looks like a deep sea animal I need it <laughs> I need it that's how I buy things for my home I'm like oh does it is it ocean themed yes all right so this looks like a good setup the Herc's leading the way now yep mm. bridge nav
can we do another 20 meter move, zero five five. So there's somebody wondering how responsive is Hercules and its cameras? Is there a delay in the controls when you're operating them or is everything real time on the fly? We, we do have some cameras that have some delay in them, but they're not used for flying. They're just utility cameras. Mm. Yeah, it would be really horrible to have a yeah. delay. <laughs> you couldn't do it. <laughs> It's uh, pretty fast. Fiber optics and speed of light, so. Yeah, the, the cameras that have the, the delay or the IP cameras and, and our primary camera is a direct fiber optic link. Likewise, on the uh, control of the of the main video camera, I'm uh, constantly uh, adjusting the iris, uh, then focus, and uh, when I when I zoom, I'm constantly adjusting the focus, uh, and to try and do that uh, without it being real time. Once again, just like flying, it's yeah. you just lose it. Yeah, it's like trying to play a video game over a bad satellite link. <laughs> 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 Someone's wondering if it's the first time that these creatures have seen so much light. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is pitch black down there. If we were not down with the ROVs, uh, there is no light. And we're the first ones to be here, so, <laughs> yep. You can actually, you can see the time difference between the dash cam and the Argus cam, like the Zeus. They're bobbing at different. Yeah. <laughs> I see that. Oh my goodness. I didn't <laughs> notice that before. <laughs> Usually because I'm just like watching one or the other. Yep. I'm on Falcor, they had the science cam like right up here, and it had like a, like, it had to be over a second delay, and it was like, just having it there, just like oh. driving nuts. Oh, yeah. no, that would drive me nuts. <laughs> like, <laughs> hurt your brain. <laughs> yeah. You guys good with like point three knots on these moves? Um, yeah, well, I, don't, I can't be certain of what's coming up up here, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Point three, mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Don't want to go too fast. No. Nope. Yeah, well, this takes a lo really long time. We're at three thousand meters. Yeah, can't really yeah. stop. Move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now. Can we make a 20 meter move, 055? Five five. 
someone's wondering, where's Coralie? <laughs> she's being a good shipmate and helping someone else on the ship, so she's actually going to be setting a different watch tonight. I believe uh, the four to eight watch, so the one right after this. So we can't see the stock because huh, the head big on. head of the tuna kit yeah, is in tunicate. front of us. Uh, but if you went to one Amen. side or the other. Looks like an angry face. <laughs> it does look like a face. It's got some uh, little buddies living in there. Wow, that looks wicked. That's so cool. Cool. What's what? a fun fact about a tuna kit? Um, tuna kits, sea squirts. When, yeah, they're called sea squirts. Mm -hmm. And when they're larvae, they have a notochord, which is like a spinal cord. Um, but then when they become adults, they lose that, and they become these sessile organisms like you see here. So like, they're a lot more evolutionarily yeah, developed as babies than they <laughs> are as adults. Hmm. How big can I get? Um, Tuna kits, they can get pretty big. Uh, you see some ones in the deep sea like this one. This one's a decent size. Yeah. Um, there's the mega mouth tuna kits. Those can get pretty large. Uh, and then shallow water, sometimes you see tuna kits living um, in colonies. And those colonies can be quite massive. So this one's a different tuna kit than the one we saw that you weren't sure what it was. Um, well, like there was the that that gastropod thing, I think I might have guessed yeah. it was a tuna kit at one point. Oh. Yeah. That's Pretty cool. cool. Yeah. Yep. Neat. And, and there was a, a the Lyroctes the tuna kits. Those ones can get quite large. And they, they come in lots of fun colors like yellow and orange and white. Have we reached the top of this wall? Or is it still? Um, it's not as steep as it was before. Right. Yeah. You want to look at this some more? Are we done? No, we're good. We're good. But you, from this view, you can actually see the stock. Yeah. Right. That I was talking about. Hmm. Oh, oh look at that jelly. Oh. jelly. It just blooped on by. <laughs> <laughs> Can we make a 20 meter move? Zero five five. Someone's wondering what side of this seamount are we on? We're on the western side, right? Uh, southwest. Southwest. Yep. Oh, okay. It's a pretty big one. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a big geo. Cucumber. Yep. Sea cucumber. It's in the family Cynalactidae. Hmm. 
There might be a good rock ahead. Yeah. I'm looking at this one, but it's probably yeah. too big. Yeah, that, that was the one I was it's spotting. It's not too bad. It's dark. Give this one a go. Yeah, that one. Lasers are right on it. I'm wondering it's if it's stuck. It's about 20 centimeters across. Yeah, that's a reasonable size. That's within cobble size. Yep. Let's see if it's stuck. Wow, it's a very round rock. <laughs> circular. Did you say a round rock was cute? No, it's very circular. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the one right there, the big one? It's, yeah, this guy's probably a big piece of broken. Yeah, so the one like on top of it. But this guy might be doable. Looks like it's got a decent crust on it. I think so. <coughs> Might be a little flat. That's all right. The edges are dark, though. Yeah. Uh, it's wiggly. It's loose. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of crumbly. Oh, oh very it is. crusty. Huh. I don't think we want weathered rocks, no, right? That's too weathered. Yeah. Too weathered? Yeah. That one, yeah, right. that's like that mud. She has like that brown on the inside. Stay there. Stay <laughs> there. Go back. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> she needs to be really rock on the inside. Yeah, she wouldn't want that. Megan, someone's wondering if the deep sea jellyfish, je jellyfish, jellyfish that we see swimming by sometimes, are they highly energy efficient? Because the last one seemed to be moving pretty fast. Um, they all swim a little bit differently. But yeah, they don't they don't spend a lot of energy um, in their swimming motion, and most of the time they get swept with currents. So their swimming doesn't need to be particularly energy uh, intensive. Mm -hmm. The waves are back. Yep. Yeah. Good Bridge currents. Now. Yeah, they're pretty, like... We're bound to see some like nice Those ones are features. steep in the back. Look yeah. how tall those are. Yeah. Ooh, it's chilly. Yeah, I think there's some tidal action going on here. Yeah, look at it. It's so detailed. Yeah, this might be some of that altered rock stuff that we were seeing on the other dive. You think? Well, it kind of has that tabley, fractured look to it. It might be something similar. I wish it was more profound, like to see, you know, yeah. like the other one. To really know. Yeah, it just started to move.
lots of sediment. Yeah, burrs. Feeling the current? Yeah. Some of these rocks look pretty angular. Yeah. Yeah, the one off to the right there. Right yeah, and the one next to it too. Yeah, mm. I like the look of the darker one. Oh. Yeah, the darker one, that yeah. one. Yeah, that's prime candidate. Looks like a prime brick. candidate. I see some angles. Jake? Yep. He's ready. So yeah, let's give this guy a try first. Might have come right off that ledge. Don't be crumbly. How hard are you gripping that? And it was it crumbly? Nine. All the okay. way. Grip force oh. nine. Yeah, Good. it actually. Uh, okay. It's got yeah, crust. I think it looks, it looks, that looks pretty like angular a solid. Yeah. 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 Not it's a bad. keeper. Not Ship bad. it. That's very, <laughs> that's very angular. Angular. Angly. Angular. Ship it. <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm all. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could have said it. <laughs> I'm just curious how many tries it would take. <laughs> Sample mode. Yep. I think I said it and then just like like went over it like I said it wrong. We, I said it right the first time. Maybe this one will fit in starboard day. Yeah, maybe so. Box coming out. Look at that. Three thousand. Yay! All right. Good job. Good job. Oh, we're off to Sample a good start. Sample eighty-four. I look like a keeper. Yep. Just find some spectacular biology before we turn over. Yeah. Although I did like that tunicate already. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Made a nice oh. appearance. Uh huh, I agree. Someone's wondering if. Um, low wildlife is to be expected at these depths, or is this just, or just not seeing much? 
Well, this is pretty deep, so yeah, you're not gonna expect to see the same density of life down here as you would near the surface. The deeper you go, the less food uh, reaches these areas. So that means you know, not as much biomass is gonna be here compared to shallow or water. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was surprised to see three fish right off the bat. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes we do find these areas that just surprise us, that have really high densities, um, even at extreme depths. So you just never know. It's a neat feature. Yeah, so it's like the same altered rock that we were seeing, but then also like real um, unaltered basalt. Yeah. So maybe it broke off from higher up, or not sure. Oh, there's a fish. See the little squiggle line on the left side? No. Mm -mm. No. But <laughs> there's like a jagged Zoom in part in the rock. Oh, I see it now, yeah. Ah. Right near the lasers. A little squiggly. Yeah. Oh. The squiggle line. Oh. Is that Neil? Yeah, it's gotta be a Neil. Yeah. What's he doing? Really tucked away there. Hiding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so probably another cutthroat eel. If I could see its little face. But it's shy. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, very cute. Or not. <laughs> He likes that ledge. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, can you zoom out again, dude? Yeah. Zooming from afar makes it really Bridge hard down. to drive. <laughs> well, here's a whip. Uh, oh, yeah. Are we done with the fish? We're done with the fish. Yeah, done yeah. with the fish. Looks like a coral off to the left, though. Yeah, it looks like There's we got some unbranched bamboos up here. Oh yeah, several. Yeah. So Mary will be happy. We're getting to the land of bamboo coral. Something's on this one. Yeah, it's a little crinoid. We're kind of unsure of whether or not the tissue recedes because the crinoid landed there or the tissue had receded and the crinoid started living there. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. What a very like specific a in the egg. spot to yeah, land. Yeah, which came first? Egg. Who knows? <laughs> which came first? <laughs> and there's a Norella. Coral, yeah. A primitive coral yeah. in the genus Norella. Oh. That's a nice shot of that crinoid on the bamboo coral. There's a black coral just off to the left beside the rock. I think it was a Staropathies or Bathopathies. Another, yeah, yeah, down there. That brown. All kinds of stuff going on here. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so that's a Bathopathies. It doesn't have any sub-branching on its branches, so that makes it path the pathies. Zoom in, Dave. Huh. That one looks like it's missing. I know it's like has a big gap. branches. Yeah, yeah. Like a little gap between the <laughs> bottom branches, and it's really close together. Yeah. But it doesn't look like it's damaged. So that's real weird. It's kind of groove funny. 
Yeah. Some of its polyps look like different color, mm -hmm. almost, different shape. Yeah, like lighter that, well, orange. that could be because it's getting ready to um, brood or, or expel its uh -huh. uh, gametes. Huh. Yeah, so they'll, they'll gather that in the tissue. So it could be time for letting all that stuff go out in the water column. The last thing I want to see in this area is the top of that really tall bamboo that was off to the right. That one looks like a different kind from the one that we just zoomed. very tall. Mm -hmm. It's very tall. This one has a crinoid too. Yep. Hey, zoom in. Yeah, look how thick that base is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what does the, the top look like? Is it branch? Like, cause it could be one of those sparse branchers. You just never know. Very tall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel stop. like we can't, we won't see the end of it. All right, there's a lot of current here. Yeah, mm. let, let's move on. I just wanted to check the top. Yeah. There it is. All right, cool. <laughs> That's all I wanted. No close ups to the top? I just no, it's fine. Now we saw a lot of. I was just telling you why I was bouncing around so much. That's fine. You can see the current. Yeah. Argus is starting to get ahead of you. Okay. There's still in the view. Yeah. Just let you know. Okay. Head now. Head now. What's the res pressure at now? Bridge now. Can we make a 20 meter move, 055? I don't really get it. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. Oh, oh, oh. Wanna see this guy? It's dead. Oh. So not particularly. Bummer. <laughs> Dead bamboo. Yep. Uh, 
lot of little things on that rock. Yeah. It's just a brittle star on the dead bamboo. No, not on the bamboo. There's little things oh, on the rock. Oh, yeah. Go for little wiggly little, things. Little wiggly things on the rock. Little wiggly things. Oh, uh, waving. Yeah. Yeah, that might be a demo sponge, so like a, whole a bunch pyloderma. Oh, yeah. Look at them all. Wiggly things. Want to zoom in, Dave? Yeah, that stick is dead, but the other ones, the, the other one that was further away near the yeah. edge, looks like it's alive and happy. Yeah, so that's a, a demo sponge. So it's not a glass sponge, it's a demo sponge uh, called Pyloderma. And it's got a little brittle star on it. On it. And you might be asking yourself, what's the difference between a demo sponge and a glass sponge? So glass sponges, their skeletons are made up of silica, so glass. Demo sponges can have other types of skeletal material in addition to glass pieces. Different texture too, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah different texture. Uh, some of them can look very glass sponge-like, so this one kind of looks like a glass sponge, uh, but it is not. And sometimes we see these pyloderma in like dense beds where there's tons of them all over the place, so we might end up seeing a lot more of these as we look at rocks further along. All right. Very nice. I think I remember seeing these at uh, Johnston Atoll. They're, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, like there was a tails. ton of them. Mm. I remember because I counted them. Let's go for that um, in, red coral. I think it's just a bathypathies, so something we've already seen. But this one oh, yeah. is really pretty. Yeah. And this one has that, you know, two-tone color that Jake was noting in the polyps. So maybe they're all about to uh, do their thing soon. Sorry, zoom out, Dave. I'm too far away. Makes it too wiggly. Bridge now. Okay, we make a 20 meter move, 055. That's pretty. Very nice. Yeah, this one has lovely color. Wait, can you remind me why there's two different colors on the... So, the it might be getting ready to spawn. So, oh. it might have... Those might be gametes. You kind of see it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't really know a lot about the timing of deep sea coral spawning events. Uh, in shallow water, we know that a lot of times these corals will time their spawning with the lunar cycle. But down here, it's a little different um, when they might spawn um, and how these corals will Back sort of schedule their spawning events. Yeah. Because it's really important if you're a coral and you're releasing your gametes into the water column that those gametes will come across another set of gametes to form a zygote 
So you want to increase your probability of that happening by releasing them at the same time as other corals of your species. Hmm. And how do they coordinate that? I don't know. It's not like they're going by the phase of the moon or something. Yeah, <laughs> that it's a big question. We, we're not sure. It, hopefully huh. one day we'll know the answer to that. Someone's commenting how some of the sponges look like fungus like <laughs> you, that you would see here. Just these ones are underwater. <laughs> are we able to sample one of those black corals the next time we see it and snip one of those areas where there are maybe gametes and someone can check for gametes in those branches? Yeah, or we could do that. That'd be cool. And yeah, we've seen quite a few of them so far, so mm -hmm. it's probably going to be another round here soon. Back out under the plains. Oh, oh yeah. man. Back to Zan. This could be a long stretch. Oh, yeah, it's okay. We're kind we of getting to the top of the <laughs> It's not us anyways. Line. It's the next to watch. Yeah. <laughs> here you go. Here yeah. you go. <laughs> it's a good place to hand Have off. Have fun. <laughs> Well, that way they can ramp up to a really nice, like, rock Yeah, we'll, yeah. Get, some, yeah. we'll get some good rocks, too. We did the blue water. You get the white sediment. Okay. Yeah. The occasional cucumber. Yeah, let's check mm. out that little blob, blob ahead. So it looks very square. Zoom in, Dave. Is this thing? Yep, it's a cucumber. It's cube. a cucumber. Just doing cucumber things. <laughs> Just looking like a cucumber. In one end, out the other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, zoom out. I've never seen it like in person though. Well, not in person because we're up here, but like I've never seen through our feeds, a green cucumber. Hmm. A green one? Uh, yeah. Like, we just haven't seen one. They're all... They I, mean, I know that they green. exist. They do come in green. I just haven't seen one. Special order. I really like the, the lemon yellow ones. Ooh, pretty. Yeah. Those ones are good. now. Can we do a 40 meter move, 055? Oh, here's a good question. Um, does the bridge have a monitor so they can see what we're finding? Every time I go up there, I've never looked if they have a like, can they watch the dive? Yeah, I think yeah. They, they do. do. Yeah. yeah, they can. Yeah. And they have a router control panel so they can pick what they want to watch. Oh, good. Yeah, so they can watch uh, my high pack screen. Um, so when they're driving around, I can drop a target and say, go to this target, and they know what I'm talking about. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually watching one of their screens, uh, the DP screen, so I know when the move is done. Hmm. Blob ho. <laughs> what? <laughs> blob, blob ho. Blob ho. It's the end of the watch. <laughs> it's like, what's that blob, guys? <laughs> Name that blob. Right now, the bridge is watching uh, what we're feeding out on the satellite channels. Oh, perfect. Quad. All right, 12 to 4 watch. I'm tired. Better? Worse. Yeah, <laughs> better. <laughs> Are we at an eye test right now? <laughs> it was better, a porch light worse. test. <laughs> better? Worse. I think it's a sea urchin. What? 
the, can the you tell from that? How can you tell from this far away? I don't know, that's my guess. <laughs> it's, it's really round. Um, that's what I think it is. So I'm going to call it and see okay. if I'm right. <laughs> okay. You probably are. I just. Floro Brank. Floro Brank. <laughs> wow. Urchin. urchin. It's a sea urchin. Well done, Megan. Well done. Pancake urchin in the family Echinotheridae. This one's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You zoom out in. Zoom in from too far away. Zoom out up in on the high pack. Yeah, sure. See the next waypoint. It'll be good for turnover. Oh, there it is. That's a bit. So we've come a decent way. All right, zoom in. Yeah. We traveled during our watch. You want porch light now? That's a good shot. And 40 meters. Awesome. In two hours. Hmm. And they've got another 700 meters to waypoint three. <laughs> Hi, Urchin. It's a pretty color. Mm -hmm. I love their little boots, though. That's my favorite thing about these guys. Good little boots. Yeah. So Look at the, their legs. Yeah, mm -hmm. at the the legs near the bottom of the urchin have these little hooves. <laughs> it's like darker than them, the yeah, rest. Yeah, little, little white boots. Oh, if cute. you stepped on this, would it, oh, it be poisonous? Um, you know how some are. Probably. I don't know. Because <laughs> I would never get to step on it. I know. I'm just. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've I've never thought about it. Um, I'm just thinking of some of the ones like. In some tropical places, where there are like signs at the beach saying "Beware of yeah, <laughs> this." Yeah, oh, I've stepped on a couple before. Ooh. I mean, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm inclined to say no. These, this one probably isn't. Um, but yeah, the shallow water urchins, because you know there are a lot more things there that want to eat them. Having some spines that will deliver a nice poison can be advantageous. Mm. But down here, you're not getting a lot that's going to be disturbing them and wanting to eat them. So they might not need to have that defense mechanism. And how big was this step? Uh, 40 meters. 40. Mm. We've done, we're done moving, so. Oh, you're going to, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep stepping. All right. It's flat enough where I think we can do turnover with a step. Okay, cool. They're all coming in now anyways. Bridge now. Can we do a 40 meter move, 055? All right, so for anyone tuning in, we're going to be starting our watch change. So we'll be quiet on SBL for a little bit as everyone gets into their uh, next watch.
Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> what is up? Salutations. <laughs> Howdy. So we've got a lot of sediment. <laughs> Heading oh. to waypoint three. <laughs> yeah, I definitely love the sediment. Very exciting. Definitely exactly what we wanted to find. Look at that texture. Yeah. The previous watch collected two rocks. So that means we need to collect more than two rocks. Roger that. Are we competing? I yes, think we also need always. a sparse brancher then. <laughs> and we need more than two sparse branches. <laughs> Well, they don't have any, so well, I think one yeah, true. beats them still. <laughs> but we're not trying to do the bare minimum here. Yeah. Oh, we would like to overachieve for we, sure. We excel. I mean, of course. <laughs> Rockstar watch. Okay. All right. So, um, is the are we holding position right now, or are we uh, going? We're right at the end of a step that Megan called in, and we should be holding position like any second. Yeah. Cool. Were they doing 20 meter steps or 30 meter steps? Uh, she had she had just put in a 40 meter step. Oh, okay. Um, I think they were maybe cruising through. We're we're cresting up this ridge, and I'm expecting if we're already in some sediment, it's probably going to continue to be sediment. Yep. Uh, and then we'll get maybe some more rocky outcrops once we get into these slopes. Sounds good. Uh, shall we shall we keep on cruising? Yeah, let's keep let's keep cruising as much as we can through the sediment. Roger, I'll call in fifty meters, huh? Whoa, sounds good to me. That's good for the pilots. We good pilots? Cool. Okay. Bridge, Nev. <coughs> Could we step five zero meters, bearing zero five five? Uh, ARG, that is a zero five five bearing. Zero five five. <coughs> ARG. ARG. <laughs> I've been calling you that the whole time. I like it. <laughs> do you? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Thanks, video. You are wonderful, Ryan. The video. Dave, you are phenomenal. Bless you. Mm. Hey, Nav. Can we do one of those nice overviews for our listeners? Yeah, we for sure can. Um, I think I'm going to put another step in here, uh, and then I'll zoom out, and we can talk about where we're headed. Sounds good. Awesome. Bridge now. Could we step five zero meters bearing zero five five? All right, shall we talk about the dive a little bit here? Let's do it. Great. Uh, so, as per usual, we are right here where our lovely purple boat is. Uh, we are cruising. We just crested up the top from this uh, pretty steep ridge below. Um, and there were, according to the last watch, some very nice rocks in that area. So I'm hoping that perhaps we see some more rocks on this um, slope above us. Uh, we started down here at waypoint 2, which is at a depth of 3,166 meters. Um, we are currently at around 3,036 meters. And we're going to end our dive at 1,909 meters. So let me zoom out so we can see the entire dive track here. We've still got quite a lot of climbing to do. Uh, compared to our our normal sort of dive configuration, we have fewer waypoints, uh, and we are still down here early on in the dive track. So we're going to climb this slope up to waypoint three, and it looks like it's going to be pretty steep, but then back off a little bit, and then it's going to get really quite steep between waypoints three and four. Maybe we'll see some cool terraces in there. Um, who knows? It's hard to know till we go, but... 
hopefully it's something really cool. Uh, and then we're going to skirt the top of this sort of local summit and continue up to waypoint six. Uh, this should be a pretty interesting area. It's really steep uh, sort of north of this local summit that we're going to be near on waypoint four. And then there's this, what looks like it's sort of a canyon system next to it, uh, where waypoint five is. So that should be interesting to explore uh, and potentially have some interesting stuff, maybe some cool currents going through there. Um, we'll find out. And then there's this other really, really steep spot right here. Uh, so that might be another place of interest between waypoint five and waypoint six. But for now, we are climbing up uh, and sort of crossing this plateau area in some sediment. So maybe we'll see some cool sediment creatures. Maybe some more umbalulas. <laughs> and maybe some holotherians. Nice. Thanks for the overview. Yeah, of course. So does that mean we get to book it over this sediment field? <laughs> we are currently, if, if we were ever to be considered booking it, I think <laughs> right now would be that time. Uh, if if we want to also in science, this would be your call and the pilots, if you're okay with it, we could increase speed a little bit too. We're at about 0 0.3 knots right now, uh, which is a, a fast-ish pace for us, um, but we 